I saw today he's got a new cologne out too that I was like, Ew. <laughs> 100%. He did not sit in a room and smell sense for this. He just told them to ba- box like Axe body spray in a yeah. new container just and is like, charging like $200 for it. Just stamped Probably. his name on it. Because the, uh, well, it's Trump Victory 47. And I believe, <laughs> I don't know if it sprays or if it's got one of those ones where you just like dab it, but you have like the top of it is his head, his like face and head. So I'm hoping Gross. you spray it and it comes out of his like mouth or something. I'm buying Probably. some. That's insane. <laughs> um, all right. Let's fucking talk about this insane movie. Uh, Katie, pick a number one through five. 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 All right. Game over. You lose. Welcome to IP Suffer. Oh no! <laughs> There's five taglines for this movie. So, God damn, oh, okay. this an interactive trip to hell. Want to play? I dare you. Uh, mm-hmm. it's interactive and state of the art, and it's not just a game. It's murder. Too long. Uh, goodbye long, reality. But... Welcome virtual reality. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, we're gonna talk lawnmower man. <laughs> I that's, mean, that's what I watched. Kind of. <laughs> I like last night. I was getting ready to go to bed, and I was like, "God damn it! I gotta watch fucking Brain Scan tonight." I forgot about this. <laughs> so I was like so used to like Tuesday or something recording, and I don't know. My whole week just like blurred by, and I forgot what was going on. <laughs> Feel that? It was one of those things where I was like, I, I sat there for a minute, and I was like, "I've seen this before," but I was like, "I haven't seen it probably since the '90s." I wonder if I can get away with this. I was like, "I'm just watching it." <laughs> An hour, 36 minutes. Yeah, not I looked worst, it up, and I was like, best. so it's like an hour and a half. Yeah. I could fucking... Yeah, get it's not this. And I just found it on YouTube and watched it without commercials. <laughs> oh, that was probably the move. Yeah. That's there was a, a lot of commercials. Anytime, that, anymore, but... when I have to see Tubi, and I see the movie's like close to an hour 40, I'm like, god damn it. <laughs> so this is going to yeah. be two hours of fucking commercials. <laughs> fucking dumb podcast getting in the way of me watching the traders. <laughs> uh, Alright, this is episode 291 of I Be Suffer. I'm Lance Hendrickson. Should have been the trickster. <laughs> I'm whoever's actually playing the trickster. I don't know his name is. He wasn't ever in anything else. T. Ryder Smith. I'm... Yeah, sure. I'm... It was essentially Howie Mandel playing the trickster. Howie Mandel would be probably pretty good too. Yeah, coming off like Little Monsters, right? And like it's every like it's essentially it, this is essentially Little Monsters, but like R-rated. They're big. They're big monsters. Yeah, they are big. They're, monsters. they're little monsters, except there's one, and his name is right. Edward Furlong. Yeah, my king, Edward Furlong. Uh, okay, so we're talking <laughs> we're talking brain scan from 1990 something. Four. Four. I, so when I watched this on YouTube, I looked at the comments, and there were so many recent comments Mm-mm. of what I, I, I no of what I assume are like literally like probably like teenagers that are like mm-hmm. I recently Oops. got really obsessed with Edward Furlong. He's so hot, so I'm trying to watch all of his movies, and I was like, "What's happening?" Yeah, Furlong Assance. It's coming. Um. <laughs> I was. I just wanted to be like, I got bad news for you if you keep going in chronological yeah. order, because <laughs> yeah, get real rough, real fast. The fair. <laughs> like, wow, I got I hope... through Brain Scan and Terminator Two. That best filmography is incredible. <laughs> Wait till you get to, to the crow fair, with the prayer. No, to be fair, it is incredible. I stand by. Well, okay, again, I'm going to preface this by saying I don't really know anything about his personal life. So if he did something bad, then I don't stand by him. But I stand by him, and I'll. I'll I'll watch anything. I the reason that I got concerned is because when you were saying that people were commenting, I was assuming it was like adults being like saying that. 
because like that's not okay no, first of all I did, I th- I, well i mean granted it's youtube so like it's not like you could see ages you know stuff, but right. a lot of them it made it they sounded like they were like gen z ish type people that just like i don't know discovered him from something i don't know if he had like a somewhat recent ish like tv role or some shit that like brought him back some relevance but like there was a bunch of them they're just like i recently like discovered him and i'm like obsessed with his movies and i'm like that's strange (laughs) yeah i mean like for me to be fair like i obviously had a huge crush on him when i was uh, young because i was like young like you know, I, I don't know how old he was in this movie. Like, definitely yeah, older but I mean, than... Like, like, you know, 1991 is, like, Terminator 2, which was, right, like, right. you know, him is probably 14 to 16, I'm guessing. Right. So, like, I was, you know, whatever, however old. I was an appropriate age to be saying I'll, those things. I'll, and I'll... now that I'm an adult, <clears throat> I, like, enjoy still to watch his movies, like, even as he's, he's younger, because, like, I enjoy him yeah i was like a child actor but i'm not watching it as like me and being like wow he's so hot yeah, in this a weird movie horn dog from for that's so gr- teenage gross. john or uh edward furlong how's gonna call him john connor <laughs> yeah like i mean he is it's fine <clears throat> i think the kid that plays kyle and kimberly in this are both like mid to late 20s when they film this. Yeah, they're, like, clearly considerably older. Like, the, Which... the actress that plays Kimberly was born in 1970, and this came out in 1994, so she was at least 23 when they filmed it, and I think I saw something about Kyle was, like, maybe 27. Okay. It makes me feel a lot better that you say that about Kimberly, <laughs> because... Like, I watched this movie for the first time last year, like I have said a few times, and I was, like, it blew my mind that I, like, did not know this movie existed somehow. Like, it just, like, literally never was on my radar at all. My brain was not scanned somehow. So then when I discovered this movie, I was like, how have I not seen this? So I watched it. Obviously, I loved it. And it didn't really... I When I was put it on the first time I watched it, I was, like, doing something else. I wasn't 100% paying attention to the entire thing and there's a scene like okay so in this movie edward furlong plays a 16 year old in high school and so kyle who's his best friend and kimberly who is his neighbor are also therefore portrayed as teenagers because they're in high school and there's a few scenes with kimberly that i was very concerned about having rewatched this again where i'm like why are they portraying her in such like a sexualized way like i understand it's like through the lens of him of edward furlong's character he's in love with her but i'm like why is she wearing like that why is she scene topless towards the, scene? the end <laughs> number one topless number two the scene towards the end where she's wearing just like lingerie as like a 16 year old that which don't get me wrong wear whatever you want but like she's like very clearly being sexualized to us the audience and i'm like i at this point, I'm a 40-year-old woman, and I am not okay with it. But if she was, like, actually really older, and she was like, yeah, it's fine, like, well, I'll do it, That's Whatever. what it's... I looked up, because one of the people I follow left a comment in their review on Letterboxd that was just like, uh, are we supposed to be looking, like, is there a topless 16-year-old in this movie? And I was like, wait. Right, <laughs> That's yeah. what, like, I looked up, and her, like, Wikipedia or whatever, her IMDb was like, born 1970. I was like, all right, that checks out. Right. So that's fine. I I was going to bring up that I was a little concerned this time about that. Um, And again, you know, it it, I'm not going to like continue to harp on it, but it is that line that we were kind of talking about with that stranger with the Stranger Things kids where it's like. They're children. Like they're children. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Like for whatever. And so, like, I don't know. I I still feel it, it was unnecessary because she's. Well, that was the, like a they're big, telling us a big 60. thing in the eighties and nineties would be like I they know. would cast these like twenty nine year olds and have them be playing like sixteen year olds who were all like for some reason at college parties trying to fuck college dudes or like well, it was, like yeah. yeah and negligees at like slumber parties and shit and I'm just like this like I, I yes I know they're all of age but uh, in the logic of this movie they're not 
Right. And that was like the huge, like we had a huge conversation about that when we were talking about Amityville (laughs) two with the sister. And I was like, I immediately need to know how old this person actually is because let's, let's figure that out. But yeah, it's fun. It's also, there there are a lot of movies that like have like 16 year olds in them, like topless and stuff that like their parents gave permission for. And I'm like, I don't know if that's still legal, but no, I hope not. I'm because I'm really not okay with that. Well, a lot of the time it's in like France or Italy that doesn't have the same, I don't think has the same. I don't know. I don't know. I like all like the laws of other states. I'm not a fucking libertarian that does every age of consent law. You should. Um, How dare you? Yeah. So this movie is fine. I love it. I I don't dislike it. But on this rewatch, all I could think about is how like this movie would be infinitely better with Lance Hendrickson. <laughs> like I, 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 I'm not, I'm not arguing with that. We'll get to it when we do like the plot breakdown. But I think where this movie really loses me, and like I said, it's, it's like a three star movie. It's totally fine. I still enjoy yeah. it. I don't think it's bad. I just don't think it's as good as I remembered it. I think the ending should be different. Okay. I like I I think this movie should have ended at like him being shot and it should have had like the video game game over instead of yeah. like the happy ending. But like I, I think that would have made it a better movie or like more fun movie for me than like the happy ending. But whatever. Yeah, I sort of agree. Like this is like okay, spoiler first. Well, first yeah, spoiler from this movie can... from nineteen ninety four. Listen, I think go watch it. What do you what do you think about it, Kit, before I talk about why what I think? Uh it's really good and I actually like the ending and don't think it's necessarily super happy because the the girl what's her name? It's yeah, like it's just like no thanks. Don't yeah. me. I don't wanna I don't wanna <laughs> no date you weirdo. Like, get out of here. Yeah. And <laughs> he's just a super fucking creep and is like, uh, maybe? Like uh yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, have a, I have a lot to say about both of them in this movie. Um, but I agree with you. I was going to say, um, I like the end. Like, this is this is pretty much like one of those quintessential, it was a dream type endings. But the reason that I like it is because of what you're saying, where it's like, it's it, it's a happy ending in that he, a 16-year-old... He's not murdered or committing murders. right. Yeah. right. But it is like, yeah, he like finally puts himself out there, asks his dream girl out, and she's like, no. And then also, he's a little evil at the end because he gives like the disc, like passes the disc on. So yeah, I kind well, of like passed it on to that, the dickhead like, that canceled the horror club. So good, good for him. Yeah, it literally entirely that guy's fault. It. It's I, like a good for you. I think moment. for me, I just like I feel like especially the '90s. And, like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my memory is just kind of, like, not working as best since I just woke up. But, like, I feel like the 90s was a period where, like, horror movies especially had a lot of, like, like, not happy endings. But, like, you know, the main antagonist, like, always has to live in them. Right. Yeah. And, like, I, I kind yeah, of. Instead of that sequel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I trust me, I get, I understand movie. why they do it, but like, I just like, I don't know. I I like the movies when you get like a bummer ending, and like I think they had like the opportunity for that here that could have made like for like a, especially if they did it like sort of quickly where he's like shot and it's like game over, like whatever, like fucking the end comes up and it goes straight to credits. I would be like, oh shit, that rules, but like. I don't know. Like, the ending's fine. I don't necessarily have any problems with it. I think it just would have made, like, for a higher rated movie for me with, like, a different ending. And obviously Lance sure. Hendrickson playing Edward Furlong. So yeah. Right. Playing Edward Furlong <laughs> and then Edward Furlong was the trickster. Yes. Um, the trickster is, like, it. Like it's so weird because he just doesn't, like, it. he feels so out of place in this movie. <laughs> Because it's like you said, like Howie Mandel, he almost feels Little Monsters ish. He feels like like yeah. Howie Mandel and Little Monsters, where he's like in a different movie. Like once, like Pri- when he puts Primus on, I was like, "What the fuck is happening?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will say. Um, uh, oh, I was gonna comment. Um, Edward Furlong was actually seventeen in this movie. 
Um, oh, yes, yeah, so, I mean, I can, that checks out, but also, like, yeah, I, feel, he, yeah. I feel like Edward Furlong, for about a decade, looked exactly the same. Yeah, And then all of a sudden, <laughs> like, he, yeah, he just, like, looked different. And I was like, oh. But, like, I... I don't know. I don't want it to sound like I'm shitting on Edward Furlong because, like Katie said, like I don't, I don't know if he had something bad in his past. Like I don't really, I'm not, I'm just commenting on like his acting skills. I guess he was just never somebody that like worked for me as an actor. So sure. like you know, I don't have any problem with him at least as far as I'm aware as like a person, and I'm not like trying to like shit on his appearance because like I know he had like a hard kind of post child actor. Yeah, uh, I like, can't. Yeah. Con- convergence into an adult and shit and like was like partying a lot and stuff so like you know good on him for where he seems to have at least got sort of a normal life now yeah it's so hard for those like children actors as we know well, I, can't, I, I, can't I can't imagine, imagine coming that, off like terminator 2 as well yeah yeah like it's the, like the having fucking action movie of all time. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say having a movie that successful early in your career, I feel like cannot be easy because then I don't know, you get cast in Pet Cemetery too, which from our standpoint is awesome, but yeah, I mean, history like... is not kind to it. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. It's and... like smaller horror movies, which I do still like him in. It's just not the same. At least movie wise. Like, Terminator 2 is his first movie role. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know if he had TV before, but then it's like you go from that into, you know, Pet Cemetery 2 and a bunch of, like, you know, what seems like lower budget movies. And then, like, American History X. And then it looks like almost everything else in his filmography after that is, like, <laughs> sort of straight to tubey ish looking shit. And then fucking greenhorn it for some reason. Yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. It's still a coming. Fucking... Buzz buzz, beach. He's very good at John Waters Pecker, though. I feel like people don't talk about Pecker a lot and John Waters' filmography, and I like that movie a lot. He's very good at it. Yeah, can't say they do. <laughs> I... 1998, wow. He, he seems to have grown up a lot in that time just from the pictures but i mean yeah oh jeez <laughs> what are your neighbors doing yeah because unfortunately i found out recently that these people did actually buy the house yep. and i'm sad about it because they're extremely loud okay let's just time to start saving any... money to soundproof your house i mean actually yeah uh, so if you hear a dog bark or a child screaming, I don't know why they have to like stay in the side yard that's directly next to my house, but I can't really do anything about it. So, um, yeah, listen to them and Hooch. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Hooch is an honored guest. Okay. They are not. <laughs> Hooch is a co-host um, at this point. <laughs> he, he is. Um, okay. Let's any final yeah, did, uh, uh, did you see there's an Amityville death toilet novelization coming out? No, Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, um, I was watching it again, like, obviously had the subtitles on, and I don't know if this was a Tubi thing or if this was just, like, how this movie was subtitled. This movie is rated R, obviously. They edited the, the cuss words out of the subtitles, and it was so hilarious to me so uh trivia fact apparently edward furlong just slept through most of the movie and had to be like woken up for his scenes <laughs> according to the That's director fine. he said he hated working with him <laughs> he's so relatable yeah, yeah seriously yeah. he i mean listen if you're gonna have a sleepy boy aesthetic like you've got to just really if you want to look tired all the time you, you've got to like, gotta be about it i like the idea that like up. his method acting for all of his movies it's just like i need to look sleepy so i'm just gonna actually sleep until i have like literally wake me up on set (laughs) he is there's like different like categories of like boys that girls like that guys are like what are you talking about one is like sick victorian child sleepy boy's one of them so uh not that i didn't realize this movie took place in new jersey so never mind up to four oh. stars. 
I, I don't think there's anything quintessential New Jersey about yeah, it. it. Nobody's even got an also. accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody okay, put so... a hashtag in one of the trivia things on here. <laughs> the fuck? Perfect. This film clips... The film clips used to represent the fictitious film Death, Death, Death Part 2. Yes. The <laughs> film being shown Amazing. in Michael's Horror Club are from the Dracula, the Dracula Saga from 1973. Hashtag Buddies Forever. What? Buddies Forever is Buddies like Forever. what they say in the movie. Yeah, but why are you putting that at like the end of your trivia thing? <laughs> because For they fun. want you to know that they are deep into the lore of yeah. Brain Scan. So now I know they are the... watch this movie. They're real yes. scanners. Yeah, exactly. Their brains have been scanned multiple times. Um, did we say, obviously we said that we, we overall gen, like, like this movie. Did we say, I picked this movie as a good movie that I like. This is not a surprise. There's, I Whatever. think this movie's having a, Going forward. Like, a, some sort of like resurgence. Yeah. We're like, I don't know if it hit, well, I guess it's only on Tubi right now, or at least, uh, you know, right. Free, but like, I've heard it like, the kids love Tubi. I've heard it like pop up a bunch on like podcast lately and i was like weird yeah it must just be that because like i said i i mean i somehow had never heard of it and if you've seen the cover for this movie it is pretty wreck it is like you would remember seeing yeah, yeah, it like so in my mind because like i said i don't think i've seen this since probably like you know renting it somewhere in the 90s yeah and like in my mind this was lance hendrickson in this movie because I mean, it, like I just have the like image him. of the poster and like whatever the fuck is going on with the trickster's head, I'm like, oh yeah, that's yeah. Lance Hendrickson. <laughs> I, I, I mean, again, it might as well be. But instead, I don't know it's whoever uh, T. Ryder Smith is from four movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his bio, his bio on Letterboxd. T. Ryder Smith is an actor. The yeah, end. he is. he sure is. <laughs> Not wrong. Yeah, they, he, they got it. Definitely it. is. Um, so yeah, I picked this movie as my first leading up to us watching good movies. So sorry if you want us to suffer suckers. Uh, well, I mean, we're not probably all going to enjoy all the movies we all pick, but, um, that being said, I'm still going to make fun of it a little bit, of course. Kit and so, I are going to find some real dog shit and say it's good. Listen. <laughs> Dick Shark. I like this movie. I wouldn't, I, I'm, gonna, I'm not putting film. that past you at all, hey, sir. look. Katie, the same year this movie came out, T. Ryan Smith, or whatever the fuck his name I said it was, it was a, a voice in the Are You Afraid of the Dark video game. Oh. Have you played that video game? No, I haven't. Well, you gotta get on it, because we do an episode on it next Halloween. Okay, so somebody also, send it to me. also a voice in Manhunt 2, the video game. Oh, damn. That game rocked. Rock. <laughs> yeah, so good. And Grand Cry Is... Grand Theft Auto 4, The Lost something lost in the damned i don't know it just says the lost and then cuts off i'm not clicking on it was the are you afraid of the dark game for a computer or was it for ps1 i don't know i'm just on imdb oh i'm uh, actually like so tale of what orpheo's you... curse is the oh. subtitle to it <coughs> hmm. and he's orpheo i wonder ominous. what you do i did have like an are you afraid of the dark board game but I couldn't for the life of me, like, at whatever age I got it, I could not figure out what you were supposed to do. Yeah, there was an X-Men board game I remember getting when I was, like, really young. And I just, I was like, I don't know how to play this. I just played with the little figures it came with. Yeah, I just like to look <laughs> at it. I'm like, well, this is, I love this. I don't know how to do, I will treasure it forever. Obviously, I didn't because I don't have it still, but sad. Um, okay, so let's start brain scan. So basically, the beginning of this movie starts with our main character, Edward Furlong, whose name, unfortunately, in this movie is Michael. You guys know how I feel about Michael. Um, but here we go. So he is having a nightmare slash reliving scenes of a car accident in which he is um, hurt as a child and his mother <laughs> dies. This um, fucking... His like plot point of him just living alone as a teenager is insane very weird uh you know what now that you're <laughs> saying it's it's new jersey the house does look kind of like a new england style house like yeah, on the river and Montreal. stuff so <laughs> no i know that but i'm just like it does have that like aesthetic or whatever because the house is like fucking huge 
This is, of course, one of those movies uh, where the child, like, the kid has, like, a fucking huge, awesome bedroom. It's, like, the entire upstairs floor of the house is just his bedroom. Um, anyways, uh, so the only reason that this, like, opening scene is kind of, like, relevant is that um, his knee gets really fucked up in the, like, car accident. And then for the rest of the movie, he has, like, a limp and that kind of plays into some stuff that happens, I guess, essentially. I don't know if I noticed that he um, had a limp until, like, whatever, the little chase thing at the end. Yeah, <laughs> I it's mean... it's, like, extra limping or whatever. Right. So, like, obviously his acting of the limp sometimes is not there, to be honest. But, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, uh one of the things that I also love about these, like, movies from the late 80s and the early 90s when um, they are portraying somebody who has, like, um, like futuristic tech, it's always the weirdest s- stuff that they do with it. Because basically, like, Michael's in his room and his friend Kyle calls via computer and he has, like, a computer program where, like, he has like like Igor, the assistant, <laughs> like, answer the phone for him, and then there's like <clears throat> pictures on the screen that like that it's like a slideshow of like whoever's calling him. So it's like the phone is rigged through his computer for him to then talk on speakerphone through the computer. And I'm like, I want that at now. the time, <laughs> right? And I'm like, at the time, <clears throat> they this, this we, people are probably like. Right, and people will probably just, like, this is amazing technology. But then it's, like, um, to me, inconsistent, because it's, like, he's got all of this, like, weird phone technology, but then, like, the video game company is still sending him a disc through the mail. So, like, I don't know. It just is, like, so funny to me whenever they're trying to make somebody seem, like, super advanced tech tech guy. Also, the Um, idea that, like, this... 15 year old did all this i guess yeah i mean he's he's living on his own what else does he have to do <laughs> not living like, on his own he's got I igor guess, but yeah he's got he's got his assistant igor i just like that his, yeah like, he also programmed like, a set like, of goodbye it's a yeah, later <laughs> literally i i was literally gonna say he also has like voice command programmed it and like my question is were people even calling through the internet in 1994? Like, God, no. We barely had didn't they, like, email in 1994. I was going to that say, worked. that's what I was going to say. So that's why it just is, like, so funny to me. Anyways, Kyle calls and tells him about this new video game that's called Brain Scan. And he's like, this is the scariest video game ever. And then Michael's, like, really sus. He's like, yeah, whatever. I've heard that before. And then Kyle goes, but it's interactive CD-ROM. Like, duh. Also, it must be good because it's in Fangoria. Fangoria is in this movie a lot. So I'm assuming that they had some kind of something to do with it. You yeah, know, back when the Fangoria one thing, was good. The one thing that doesn't hold up is it's in Fangoria. It has to be good. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Um, Kyle goes on and on about this, like, game or whatever. But Michael is just kind of like, I don't know, not really interested <clears throat> Then Michael goes to peep on the neighbor girl, whose name is Kimberly. He is looking at her through a uh, telescope through her window. And um, at, I think this entire situation to me is weird because obviously he's like peeping, peeping through her window. But it also becomes very clear that she's like putting on a show for him to peek at her. Like, she gets dressed in front of the window on purpose. And um, this is, again, when we were like, okay, it's a little sus, but she's of age, so it's fine. Uh, and he's, like, watching her or whatever. And then Kyle's like, dude, dude, are you, like, oh, how's Kimberly doing? And Michael's like, what are you talking about, man? And then he's like, yeah, okay, anyways, buddies forever? And he's like, <laughs> buddies forever. I fucking love it. I'm going to start saying buddies forever, you guys. That's going to be our call out, okay? Pass. So... <clears throat> Too bad. I'm going to say it. I'm going to keep saying it. (laughs) Um, So then Michael calls 1-800-555-FEAR. And um, meanwhile, you know, he dials it on speakerphone and he puts on the Three Stooges to watch while he's waiting, I guess. Of course he does. He's a dude. (laughs) Like, what the fuck? 
<laughs> Dudes only want one thing, and it's to watch Three Stooges while on speakerphone. Amen. So he gets through to the brain scan hotline, and some guy is, like, telling him about the game and, like, how it's interactive and stuff. And, um, yeah, I like, he kind of just calls to, like, find out more information or whatever. And then he sits down in his, like, gaming chair, and somehow there's he gets, like, beamed like there's just like a bunch of flashing light and he kind of like looks like he's having a seizure or something and then the guy's like okay no worries um the version of the game that you're going to be playing is called death by design see you later and just like hangs up and then and then uh michael's like what the fuck just happened and he tries to call the hotline back but he can't get through spooky popular um yeah yeah People are always calling 1-800-555-FEAR. Like, you know? I mean, I want to uh, call it right school. now, so. Do it. No, thank you. I might have to actually talk to somebody on the phone. <laughs> I wonder if you could just Google to see if it's a real phone what number. What was it, 1-900 or 1-800? 1-800-555-FEAR. One... I mean, I know all my get is a bunch of shit from this movie, so. <laughs> well, definitely. Um... At school, Michael gets in trouble for watching a movie called Death, 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 Part 2. I like it. It's a good title. <laughs> like, I hate how much these movies will just pick, like, the, the fucking blandest title for, like, whatever movie they're watching. That's supposed to, like, they're, like, making fun of a horror movie or whatever, where they're like, oh, it's, f- you know, Face Mask Slasher 6. Yeah, McStabby face or whatever and and like (laughs) so he's showing this to like the quote unquote horror club the principal comes in and is like what is this garbage and he's like basically saying like giving him a lecture about like essentially about how horror will like make you an evil murderer and whatnot. you know how that you know know how that goes that's how that is what happens um He's like, I am banning the horror club. If you want to show like any movies going forward, you have to like basically get my approval. And he's just like, okay, whatever. Um, he mopads home and uh, comes upon an accident, which of course gives him a flashback to the accident that he had with his mother as, as a child. But then that's the only other time it ever comes up. So that was kind of a weird like. Like, the whole accident stuff, aside from to show us that he's, like, obviously gone through trauma, kind of doesn't really make a huge impact on this movie. Yeah, like... Yeah, I think you could have gotten away with just doing, like, the intro instead of, like, flashbacks all the time to remind people. Like, yeah, we we saw. We thank you. Um, But anyways, yeah, there's an accident, and he's, like, kind of freaked out about it because there's, like, blood on the road. And then, um, Frank Langella, is that how you say his name? Yeah, it's Skeletor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he shows up and, uh, is basically just mean to Michael and is like, go on, get. Um, so he, Michael gets home. Yeah. He's mad he doesn't have anyone to sexually harass on set. Well. (laughs) Yeah, I forgot he had that shit, like, recently. He was like, I don't understand why we need these, like, sex scene coordinators. Wolf. I don't like that. Didn't he die recently? Uh, no, he uh he got kicked off the House of Usher for sexually harassing someone, and then just like nothing has been heard yeah, we from him ever like, since. Why I thought he died? God damn, he's. I mean, he might have kind of hoped he old. did. Yeah. See ya. I mean, I don't so, know how much I have like a fucking outside of like Masters of the Universe. I could not pick another movie I know him from. The Box. I don't know what that is. Um, I think that's what in, it was called. He was in Small Soldiers. I have not seen that. Which, oh, yeah, that's true. Well, that was one of my favorite like childhood movies. He was also in Dave. Um, no, no Dave. No. I remember Klein, Dave. Sigourney yeah. Weaver. All right. I've seen Dave. He's I just the president stand really remember yeah i mean he does not mean anything to my life um no, he is yeah, the detective so, I mean, I just... in this movie so yeah he's he's there being terrible actually um so we're just gonna call him the detective 
Um, oh, he so, was in Superman Returns. Never mind. He's in the bad Superman movie. I well, don't think I've seen that one. Uh, that's the oh, one where a... Brandon Routh plays him, and he does it. He throws like one punch the whole movie. Perfect. It's like just sad uh, he... Superman flying around being sad. He's also in this movie that, as a child, I loved, but now is very awful because it's The Ninth Gate. Uh, which was directed by Roman Polanski and Johnny Depp oh, yeah. also in it, and I'm like, yep. that's just a lot. That is a lot. What? So we 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 shan't talk about that one anymore. What if either. I told you he was the voice of Commodore Francis Stout? That wouldn't mean anything to me. I know, but it should mean something to Katie because it's American Dad. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Um, okay, so All Michael right. goes home. We stand Franklin Jello. So no, getting, <laughs> so we're getting at. <laughs> um, and brain scan has come, has arrived via the postal service. What? Like I'm was, just is, saying. Oh yeah, never mind. I guess they, the movie was called Brain Scan. I was like, why didn't they name this Brain Scan? I was like, wait, yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. It, they did. For some reason, they I just I just had it, like the one eight hundred whatever fear in my head, and I was like, oh, you know, it's like fear dot com. That's the name of it. <laughs> oh, to, fear dot com dot com. We. We should do fear.com. It's literally That's the my worst. That's a good movie. Okay, I'm, I'm in actually. That ghost ship, but we're only watching yeah. the first 10 minutes. I will watch the whole thing. Don't worry. Yeah, same. <laughs> um, I got to talk about Munder. Um, uh, you know, I'm picking Madam Web as my first good movie. Oh, God. oh my God. <laughs> I can't. I can't how, fucking I can't... wait for that movie to hit streaming so I can watch it. I can't either because then like one of my friends like messaged me and was like, uh, should I go like they have like some kind of pass to the movie theater or whatever. So she was like, should I go see this or is it going to just oh, make me mad? Yes. Like, if I had a like, the it, pass like, thing, I would go every day. Well, she was like, if like, is it like bad in a way that like I will think it's funny or will I just be mad about it? And I was like, to be fair, I haven't seen it. I'm not going to go spend my time or my money to go to the theater. But I'm going to hate watch it when it comes out. But I was like, so far, like, the rating is lower than Morbius. And she was like, oh, Morbius made me mad. I was like, so maybe go see something fun. I, I don't know. I saw, like, a clip <clears throat> that apparently they just, like, reuse, like, Spider-Man swinging footage from Spider-Man 2, the Sam Raimi one in it. Perfect. Amazing. Just straight up the same shots of like a POV shot of like swinging up like a building and it's the exact same shot they just took from Sam Raimi's movies. I'm going to see. It's got a 1.6 right now. Oh yeah, it's, on it's what's... That's pretty good. It's currently yeah, sitting bad. on Rotten Tomatoes and I think <clears throat> a lower score than Morbius now. Yeah, so I, I'm excited Which to doesn't say much cuz Morbius is a free. five-star movie. Well, you know, so remains to be seen but i was like maybe go see something like no they don't i would have said go... yes it's supposed to be very good no i can't <laughs> i'm not mean to my friends like you are yeah. but <laughs> so i want my friends to watch bad I... movies i'm a good friend <laughs> and then i said buddies forever and she said buddies <laughs> well, forever said, we high five forever <clears throat> okay so yes again oh so I, that's like one of the things Brain scan can somehow zap you at your house and deduce what kind of game you're playing, but they have to like send the disc to you via postal mail three to five business days. Sure. So he gets it. Uh, he goes upstairs. He has a message on the answering machine from his dad, basically saying like, "Hey, buddy, I he's on a work trip and he's going to be gone longer than he thought." So yeah. Oh wait, so his dad is alive? Or yeah. no? Yeah, he just leaves for long stretches of time. Um, I remember, just, I remember like... there was a voicemail, but for some reason, like, I, isn't there like a voicemail that he's like, maybe a, maybe it's the same one. For some reason, I I heard the voicemail and assumed it was him listening to like, you know, the last voicemail of like a dead loved one, sort of no. thing. It's just the mom that died in the accident. Look, I'm not gonna lie, and so... I barely pay attention to this. <laughs> Apparently, because why... I don't remember, I fucking am not. That's why. That's why I'm like, I have the notes, and I know what happened, so don't even question me. I'm going to. Because <laughs> a lot of the time you can't read your notes, so. Well, I can read my notes <laughs> this time, and it says his dad calls and is, like, on a work trip, okay? 
And um, he's like, yeah, I'll be back later. See ya. So, yeah, essentially he <laughs> lives in this, like, huge fucking house, like, essentially by himself because he's got, like, an absentee dad or whatever. So, I don't know. Again, they're just trying to use this, like, trauma that happened when he was little to kind of explain why he, like, essentially is alone. You know, he's 16, whatever. And you know what? Good on him for actually still, like, going to school I, and stuff because I feel like I'd be like, nah. <laughs> at least there's a fucking adult that, like owns this house because that was my biggest concern is i was like how does this like 16 year old they're just yeah. like yeah you can yeah. live by yourself i need a mortgage your parents especially, are dead so yeah this is fine especially yeah just if, take like, it it's fine especially if the house if they're if they factually are supposed to be living in new jersey nobody's affording that fucking house it's oh my huge. god no are this we, was um, 94 that house probably cost like eighty thousand dollars. oh no not not uh, in new jersey <laughs> yeah like I've had like Kayla and I've talked about it. Like when we kind of briefly were like, maybe we'll buy a house, but that like, no, yeah, not that. Did, like <laughs> we, we literally had a phone call with my mom last night who is in like a small ass town in like Ohio who was talking about like a neighbor that recently, like last year or something bought their house for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Of just like a one story what? house in Ohio that say, this is like year is selling 40 it. square feet. No, they're now selling it for oh, like almost 200. Yeah. And I was like, so in like a year, the price for it has gone up that much. And she was like, they didn't really do like any, anything to like upgrade it. It's just relatively the same. Yeah. House. And like, the fucking value. And like, the it, market's you know, it's like a stupid two bedroom, one story house. Yeah. And so, and like here, Especially depending on like what areas. If you're like anywhere up north, like you're at least probably three hundred thousand and up for just like the cheapest house. It's fucking insane. I was gonna say it's supposed to be cheap here and like the cheapest shit's like three hundred thousand dollars. Like so like so much of New Jersey is because of just like proximity to Philly and like New York and then like the shore. Is just Getting like that access. It's so fucking expensive here. Sopranos privilege. Yeah, you yeah. go to the Bada Bing strip club. There's a, <laughs> there's a strip club literally down the street from me that's open till five a.m. on the weekend. Like that's what you're paying Damn. for. <laughs> that well, strip club worth it. Caitlin always yeah, tells even... me about a strip club from that maybe still exists. I don't know. That has a thing called legs and eggs in the morning. We could <laughs> go to a buffet, that is so a gross. breakfast buffet. <laughs> That's incredible. And I was like, God, if I wasn't vegan, <laughs> Ew. I would go once just to get a massive food poisoning. I assume. <laughs> yeah, it would rock say, just to, to say you fair, went. Mm-hmm. It's probably there's probably it. They probably are. It's like not even real eggs. I mean, it's also probably not as gross as most buffets are in general. It's probably roughly the same. That probably. Probably better than Waffle House, to be honest. Yeah, but Waffle House. How dare like, you? From a safety Waffle... standpoint. Well, yeah. Waffle House is amazing. <laughs> I mean, granted, I haven't had anything outside of just plain hash browns at Waffle House in like 20 years, but God, I, I wheezed. It's not the quality of the food. Oh, no. It's the the, the, the safety. The, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the cockroaches swarming the building without, like, and have me concerned. My senior year of high school, my friend Jeremy and I would go every Friday morning to Waffle House in the morning. And it was always a mistake because I would eat too much and then like halfway through school be like, uh, I'm fucked. <laughs> I gotta shit myself to death. I'll see you later. Yeah, I gotta go home. <laughs> I fucking love Waffle House. It's so Their good. blueberry nougat <laughs> waffles are the fucking best. I've never you know, had anything outside of hash browns and like maybe burgers there. So, but they're, yeah, they're I hash only browns, get breakfast. fucking mushrooms and jalapenos and cheese on it. Mm. Perfect. I want hash browns. Same. Fuck. We just bought some, so now I got a whatever day we do breakfast stuff for dinner. I'm ready. Legs and eggs day. Yeah. Legs <laughs> it's okay that we're doing day. legs and eggs day. Legs and eggs Thursday. Um, I'd love to call out of work. So I went to. <laughs> sorry, I went to legs and eggs yesterday. They got me fucked up. I got worms. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Why did that even happen? Oh, legs and eggs. Legs, oh, okay. legs and eggs. It's, it seems like it's too still, much power. still happening. It's because he is essentially <laughs> uh, home alone because his his fa- his dad doesn't want to. Do you be guys want to try so... the steak and booty shake combo or the legs and no. eggs? Which is your 
Which which would you prefer? Oh Legs my and god. eggs. <laughs> uh, Johnny's I... Johnny A's hitching post. <laughs> Friday, Is that legs what it's and eggs open at seven a.m. It get, it gets better and better. <laughs> Incredible. Complaining, I had to work the legs and egg shift at the strip club. <laughs> I can't imagine. You're going to get the real weirdos in at 7 a.m., right? Well, it's that, like, because... For breakfast at the strip club? One of the places... Or, they're, or they've <clears> just <throat> been there. There was night. there were places, like, a, uh, by one of the jobs when I still live in Ohio, that because there were... There was, like, a big-ass, like, Honda factory and, like, a couple other ones that had, like, a lot of night shift people. There were people or, like, uh, places around no. it started realizing you could open, like, a early morning bar for the people getting off at like 6 a.m. That makes sense. And stuff like that. So like, I feel like that probably would do well with like third shift, like overnight workers. Yeah. Who could just go and like do that for a couple hours, go home and sleep. Must... Sounds terrible. Hell yeah. I'm going to start a strip club. It's only open from like 6 a.m. to noon. Yeah. <laughs> That's ideal. <laughs> All right. Anyway. We don't oh need to, to turn this um, into Billy the Big Mouth Bass episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I for, oh, Billy. Oh, no, trust um, me. Okay. I fell down such a rabbit hole trying to figure out how easy it would be to hack those things to release as a podcast episode on one of them. Pretty we got to figure it out. I get just limited edition one. We're the only person who ever gets to hear that episode is whoever buys that one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so... Idea. Next door, Kimberly is having like a house party, and um, Michael is like, nah, I'm not, I don't care. And so he decides that he's gonna play brain scan. So um, he puts in brain scan and he says, Igor, hold on my calls, or whatever the fuck. And so he, he yeah, he puts right, on loser. No one's calling you, <laughs> right? So you, you have a does... subscription to Fangoria, you don't have any friends. Yeah, exactly. So You're playing video games he, when there's a party happening next door. <laughs> he boots up brain scan and um, actually. Yeah, I just realized we're talking Kimberly... about teenage me. I don't like this. Yeah, same. <laughs> uh, I didn't expect really calls though. Yes, same. sorry, Katie. <laughs> Go ahead. You just use. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Kimber... Oh wait, did you Kimberly see this? Kimberly tries to call. <laughs> And uh, she obviously it's busy because he's trying to play brain scan. Like, actually, though, if he wouldn't, you can't, if he's using the internet, you couldn't have called anyways. You don't have to hold your calls. Like, it uses one line. I, I just realized that. Oh, yeah. If he's using, if he's using dial up, yeah. Plus, I don't know. Was the internet I feel like, like this, like a, a known thing in 1994? I don't know. I really don't know. I, I, that's like the downside of being like the generations that like grew up when the internet was like invented and stuff. It's like, I don't actually know. The lines are so blurred for me. Yeah. Like I can't like, I know we had internet pretty early on and I just, I just can't remember like the time period. Actually, I think I could figure this out. When did Odelay by Beck come out? <laughs> <laughs> that is that is not what I was expecting. I I have a very distinct memory of us going to this like a computer show at Hera was... Arena in Dayton, Ohio and buying a new computer and it was when we really when we first got like internet and I remember buying Odelay at the same computer show by somebody that was selling stuff. <laughs> so that would have been I thought it was going to be the first <laughs> that was going to be the first song you downloaded on LimeWire. Yeah, no, I don't know. I, I, I don't immediately. know if I could tell you what that was, but most likely it was some something Metallica. So this says the internet started to be available for the public in 1993. So unless you were like my stepdad at the time worked for either IBM or AOL, so like we would have been. Like we would have had access to the internet then, but most people didn't. So, like, if this movie was filming at the same time, then no, none, none of the, you know what I mean. Like, they were on top this, of it. None of none of this <laughs> stuff. I, they predicted it actually. John... They predicted VR. <laughs> John Smith. What if what VR was created because of brain scan? I think it was. Brain, yeah. brain scan and sense. fucking lawnmower man. Yep. 
<laughs> when did Lawnmower Man come out in comparison to this? Um, let's see. Let's see. Some 90s. 92. 92? Yeah. God damn. Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, there was a so, shit ton of VA, VR stuff in, like, the fucking 80s. Yeah. Yeah. But, like... War games. Thinking of, like, in, like, you know, a more, like, down-to-earth version like it is in, like, this, where it's just straight up, like, somebody using the internet and stuff, as opposed to, you know, whatever weird-ass Billy Blanks action movie dealing with VR... Yeah, I mean, I guess they don't actually ever talk about the internet, and I just, I guess there what there would have been a way for you to. I just like don't understand the phone calling through the computer. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's like I just more but, more was like, wait, ninety four. This doesn't check out. <laughs> yeah. A, either way, any of these movies in the nineties that are like using the internet also are not using the phone. <laughs> yeah. Um, back in our day, anyways. So, um, okay. Uh, Michael has booted up Brain Scan. The announcer comes on and tells him that essentially through blinking signals, he will be in control. He will see through the eyes of a serial killer and control him to kill in uh, the time allowed. Michael's all smug about it, and he was just like, oh, you mean like a video game? And the announcer says, video games are ancient history. <laughs> and I was like... I mean, is this still video game, bro? <laughs> like, ideally. It is, it is, and also video games barely existed. So, chill out. Um, he advises him that he is going to have to think like a killer and that he can leave no evidence behind. He needs to cover all of his tracks and he has to do it in the time allowed because if time runs out, then he will fail and he will not be able to play anymore. And then he says, enjoy the fear. So spooky. <laughs> so, um, yeah, again, uh, don't watch this if you're sensitive to blinding lights because uh, basically Michael just gets blinked at by the TV a bunch and it's like, blah, blah, blah. and um, it opens place. on it's, it's very specifically. Yeah, so if you don't, if that will trigger you in any way, just be aware. Don't be listen wary. to any of our episodes because it happens like one. <laughs> actually, <laughs> really, actually, don't. That's like my go-to. So sorry if that triggers you. Um, <clears throat> don't have uh, operate heavy machinery, as they say. <laughs> if you're listening <laughs> so, to this while riding a forklift, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I just imagine I do it, and someone's like, "Ah!" And they just like veer their forklift, <laughs> crashes their forklift an entire warehouse. The... <laughs> <laughs> Literally, sorry. Um. <clears throat> okay, so it opens up on a first person. I wrote. <laughs> I wrote first person first person POV, which is like. Basically, like an oxy, oxymoron or whatever, and that's the same sort place. of <laughs> point of view of the first person. Mm -hmm. uh, if for some reason you are not a nerd and you don't know what that means, it's literally Google just like, it. Like, yeah, it literally just means fucking Google it, nerd. Um, yeah, we're not here to do work for yeah, you. We're here to give you wedgies because we're cool jocks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're so cool. <laughs> We're not playing video games on a Friday night. Uh, no. I mean, to be fair, I'm not, are. but I'm just watching the fucking traders instead. <laughs> that's just as bad. Yeah, that's so. probably worse, honestly. That's but a also, great the show. traders rocks, so it that's fair. Um. Okay. So it. So it's essentially again, like I said, first person view. So it's just the camera, and it's of a. But as this is happening, so. Ed, uh, Michael has assumed the role of this serial killer. So he's like looking out through the eyes of this quote unquote character, but he's being talked to by the announcer of brain scan. Uh, so yeah. So basically he is seeing, um, being outside a house at night, he goes into the house and, um, the announcer is like giving Michael instructions. Like he walks into the kitchen and he looks up at this like rack that's holding like knives and pots and pans and stuff. And he's like, pick a weapon, you know, like that kind of thing. So he gets a knife. Um, he goes upstairs where he sees a man laying in bed and he starts stabbing him. Brain scan. <laughs> Game sounds I, so I wrote shitty. brain scan. Brain scan laughs. <laughs> uh, 
We find out that this narrator is actually the trickster, but we d- don't know who the trickster is at this point. Spoiler alert. Um, Jeez. I know. Jeez. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Uh, he starts, like, laughing as the man is literally just, like, flash, fl- like thrashing around and wrecking up the place. <laughs> awesome and, over-the-top um, death acting. <laughs> like, like, seriously, though. He's, like, flipping over tables and, like, all kinds of shit. Uh, falls on the ground. Eventually, he ends up dying. Uh, there is a tattoo of a snake curled around this guy's foot. I don't even know what you call that part of your foot. It's like the top of your foot, but like your ankle, but like the front of it the going up to your shin. Your foot. Yeah. The slutty part of your foot. Yeah. <laughs> the sluttiest part of your foot. You're showing that <laughs> the part, part off. that's always out. Yeah. If you're walking around in flats, that that's she's winking at you. Uh, or he... he basically. Well, the, I'm just, it's, whatever. <laughs> feet are gross, um, we're not, we're, only Katie's into feet. No, I'm not. <laughs> A slutty shin, yes. The foot, no. Let's not go that far. Um, <clears throat> and, yeah, so he uh, cuts off the man's foot and takes it with him. So after all of this, this scene, a lot of these scenes in this movie are a little bit long. So like my actual notes aren't super long. It's just kind of like a, like whatever. Um, But Michael wakes up in his, in his own body, in his like gaming chair. And he's all like all sweaty. And he's just like, yeehaw, that was awesome. I mean, I I guess there were like gaming competitions, but I, I, I don't know. I guess gaming chairs were around then. This movie's too ahead of its time in my mind. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, how does he know what a gaming chair is? I don't know. He created um, it. I mean, because I know there were he, probably, like, LAN parties and shit for, like, you know, computer games happening at this point. Quake so like, 3. I guess there would be. Yeah. I got, I used to play, like, fuck, what was that game called? Doom. No, it was, like, <laughs> before Doom. I fucking love Doom. It was one of those, like, Sierra something... I'll, I'll figure it out. It was a Sierra okay. video game thing. One of those weird, like, uh, nerd quest. Leisure Suit Sierra Larry. West. I didn't know they made Leisure Suit Larry. What a banger game. <laughs> yeah. I think it was King, for, like, King's Xbox King's Quest. Also. Okay, yeah. Something like that. It was one of those type games that I remember my dad buying and not being able to figure out how to play, so I just took it over. Yeah. And I was also very um, bad at it because I would just constantly just get like bludgeoned to death by like a cyclops or some shit like four screens in. Yeah, I hate it when that happens. Of, yeah. There's a lot of games that like I remember getting as a child and just like I was too young. I just like couldn't even figure out what you're supposed to do. But I'm just like, whatever. Yeah, you just do the like, same I'm shit doing all it. the time. I'm playing the game. Yeah. It's not like Mario, which was like extremely easy to figure out, but some of these old ones are just like so archaic. I don't know. You know how many young people can't figure out how to play like Super Mario, bro? Like the first one, they think it's too hard. Yeah, that's or like I mean, it is too hard. Almost any game on like the <laughs> NES, which is fair because yeah. Battletoads is fucking impossible, and Ninja Gaiden was them, hard as fuck. Yeah, some of them are just like hard because of. Like the restrictions of the software just make it like impossible to play. But it's always so funny when you think back of like some of the you know, like a Tiny Toons video game, and you're like, "Oh, I can't imagine getting that for your child," and then just them having fun playing with how fucking difficult it was. I mean, yeah, like when I got my first Game Boy, um, I don't remember how old I was, but it was a Game Boy Color. And my mom got me this, like, Alice in Wonderland game because I loved Alice in Wonderland, like, the movie. The game was, like, impossible to figure out how to play. (laughs) And I was, like, it just really is one of those things that, like, they're not, like, they just, like, make the game as, like, a tie-in to sell money. It's not for children, you know what I mean? Like, and it's just, like, a fallacy that it's, like, oh, it's a video game, must be for kids. Like, no. I could probably barely read. No, that's not true. But you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I mean, I can barely read um, now, so. Right. And so, you know. So, Michael, yeah, Michael wakes up in his body. He's all sweaty. He's like, woohoo, that was insane. I loved it. And then he does something extremely heinous, which is that he gulps a glass of milk. (laughs) Forgot about this. And it runs all over his chin. And I hated it so much. It really grossed me out. It's just a stomach ache waiting to happen. Because... 
because he when we when he first parts so he's got the time limit on the game and we see it right it was like either an hour or 40 minutes or something and he completes killing that dude and he's got like nine minutes left or whatever that glass has been sitting there for at least half an hour that glass of milk it is now room temperature milk mm -hmm. that's a good shit more milk and he gulps it vomitous i can't <laughs> um okay snorts it Snort the milk. Oh, God. That seems so terrible. <laughs> yeah, I can't. No. I just think about any uh, time next... I've like, coughed, I have like, a liquid in my mouth or something, and it like, yeah. goes in your sinuses. Literally the worst. Have it? Has that ever happened to you with food? Oh, no. I've done it. I did, oh, it. Yeah. I did it with a Jolly Rancher, where the oh, no. liquid <laughs> like stuff from the Jolly Rancher got into my nose, and for days I had like blue raspberry in yeah. my sinuses when I would like blow my nose. It was the fucking worst. That happened to me with a pixie stick and then also rice. There was a kid in my high school that snorted a pixie stick and it seemed not great. <laughs> no. Okay, I lied. That's actually what I did and it was really terrible. <laughs> you, did we go to high school together? It was me! <laughs> <laughs> Were you a weird um, dude named uh, John? Yes, I was. I think his it's name me. Is John. Buddies, buddies forever. Yeah. Hashtag, you you said buddies forever. Hashtag buddies forever. Seriously. Even you celebrated right. by snorting a pixie stick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just so excited. Um, okay, the next day, uh, Michael is telling Kyle about how amazing the game is. It was like this is like a crazy experience, and Kyle's like, okay, well, like, what's it about? He's like, oh, forget about what it's about, man. It was just amazing. It was the best thing ever. And so Kyle's like. <laughs> All right, so can I, like, borrow it? And he's like, uh, no. And I'm like, why doesn't Kyle just call and get his own copy? It's not as if he paid for it. He just called and was like, hey, what's up with this game? And they gave it to him, Kyle you know? does not look like he has a very good home life or money. No, he, Kyle, yeah. Okay, 24, well, that's he's what hanging I'm out with this teenager. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It doesn't appear that he paid for the game. So... Look, yeah. I'm going to tell you right Anyways, now, if you're getting a video game for free in the mail, it's yeah, to turn it's you into a bad. murderer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's like, um, you know, let me just play it a few more times and then I'll let you borrow it. Like, don't worry. It's, it, we're cool. We're cool. And um, then Kyle says, buddies forever. And then they high five. <laughs> buddies forever. Um, we stand. Okay, so my, we stand buddies forever. We do. I love it. Uh, Michael goes home and tries to play the game again, but it doesn't work. I will point out that it is daytime now when he's trying to play, uh, and he can't get it to work. And he's like, ah, oh, damn it. Uh, but then he sees Kimberly come home, and so he goes over to next door to talk to her, and um, his dad answers the phone or the door, and it's, like, very awkward. Uh, so he's, like, standing in the living room waiting for Kimberly to come down. Then he sees on TV a news report about a man who has been killed and it's the man that he killed in the game the night before. And he's like, that's not great <laughs> to <laughs> say the least. He like freaks out. He's like, uh, uh, I gotta go tell Kimberly. Uh, I'll talk to her later. And, she, and he runs out. Her, he's her, like, her parents seem real fucking terrible. Like, yeah. I guess, granted, like, I don't I don't know what their past is with this Michael kid, but, like, they are so shitty to him when he comes over for, like, yeah, what seems they... to be no reason. Yeah, it, actually, exactly. Like, the dad is, like, like almost not even going to let him in. I would be like, like they oh, have to you're know that kid that, that lives like... by himself? Yes, please come in. <laughs> you need help. Yeah, you're... You're that kid who has suffered a very bad trauma as a child and now whose dad is an absentee dad. Nah, Would you fuck like off. dinner that isn't a glass of hot milk? No. <laughs> hot milk only. Hot milk at a Freeze place. it for freeze it for solid food. <laughs> blend oh, it. God. Freeze it and then blend it. I mean that is yeah. essentially a milkshake, but but Put just macaroni the in it. to me sounds Oh. <laughs> Milkaroni and cheese, which is just a different kind of milk, like, really. Isn't that almost just yeah. macaroni and cheese? I guess just, yes. it'd just be yeah. very yes. liquidy. You just yeah. don't have the cheese part. Gross. Yeah. Um, Macaroni milkshake. There you go. We're almost all the way back around to meat shake. 
Yeah, we're getting there. It's been years since we've talked about it. I can't believe someone has We had a slow roll to the 300th episode. Someone hasn't made a macaroni-flavored milkshake yet. For episode 300, we should all make meat shakes and drink them. I could blend up some, like, vegan chicken and do a shake, I guess. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to go to Arby's and get a uh, beef and cheddar, and I'm just going to blend it. Blend it. (laughs) I could see... Okay, go go with me here. I could see a <laughs> Never, like no, chicken and no. waffle style milkshake with like syrup, but any kind of red. I I don't know. I've made a huge mistake of looking yeah, at mac and think... cheese milkshakes, and apparently they are a thing on TikTok. Oh, no. of course they are. I, I was I was gonna say, oh, they are, and then you said TikTok, and I'm I'm back off board. I'm gonna oh, actually God. these see... people are making that like you know like uh, how you do like a margarita glass where you put like the the stuff yes. on the side, but it's like just ma- I I can't tell if it's the cheese or the macaroni covered <laughs> it's in cheese. macaroni. They got macaroni noodles upsetting. rimming the glass. Like I guess one restaurant made like did yeah. like did an actual deluxe mac and cheese milkshake for like April Fool's yeah. Day as a dessert. Looks like fine. I would try it. Yeah, it's shredded but cheese on the side. I'm... Wait, does it still have whipped cream though? I yeah. don't know. It looks like it could be like I a don't... you know like a more like savory thing on the side. I yeah. can't tell. Let's see. Oh god, I don't these know. pictures I, are I... upsetting. The pictures aren't great. I feel like I have no room to talk because I'll try almost anything dill pickle flavored, and I've. I've tried I mean, dill pickle ice cream. Don't get me wrong. If I, I came like, across a vegan version of this, I would try it. I don't think it would be good. I think I would. <laughs> I don't think I would try a milkshake that had meat in it, though. Like, I think that's where I draw the line. My problem would be, like, like, it, like, I know there would be, like, a chunk in it when I was drinking it, and it would be upsetting. <laughs> Surprise you through the straw. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gross. Anyway. Um, Michael killed three mm-hmm. people in the end. Oh, Michael yeah. sees the With news report shakes. about the guy <laughs> that he killed, and he runs, freaks out, and he's like, "This can't be real. It was a game. Like, I don't know." He goes to the crime scene, which probably is a bad idea because not only does he go to the crime scene, but he steps under the police tape and approaches the house. You never um, return to the scene of the crime. Like, no. come on. Granted. Granted, he goes there because I think he's trying to figure out, like, was it actually real? But then he's, like, seeing the things in the yard that register with him that, like, oh, my God, I actually was here. Uh, This is when the detective comes out again and is like, hey, kid, you following me? And Michael does the second thing you should never do where he says, I can explain. (laughs) He says, I can explain. And the detective's like, explain what? And then he's just like, um, and he's like, go on, get, and he tells him to get out of here again. I can explain I'm not the murderer. Yeah. Uh, I can explain why I'm here at a second crime scene. How do you think um, this video game works in, like, the real life? Is, like, Michael just, it's like... It's gotta be bad for your brain. But, like, is Michael just kind of, like, zombie-like walking to this dude's house? So, I mean, spoilers, towards the end, the. Uh... Kyle told him that it like hypnotizes you and that one guy's eyes exploded. Yeah. So, so yeah. So the answer is yes. However, I have an issue with it, which we'll get to very soon. So mm-hmm. basically no issues. after, after the detective says, go and get, uh, he scur- he scurries on home and, uh, at home, Michael finds, he opens his freezer and finds a the severed foot from the night before just in there with his chicken nuggies. And Gross. um yeah, he calls uh info about one eight hundred five 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 fear, but the woman is the operator is like, Hey, this doesn't exist anymore and he's like, That's 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 not true. <laughs> yeah. Well that's mean? terrible timing. <laughs> then brain scan calls him. This is the, one of the, the first time that I noticed that the subtitles were edited because Michael yells fucker and the subtitles said you sucker. Hell and I was yeah. like, that's not what he said. <laughs> I loved it. I love editing. There's a really good I like one. edited curse words in movies, especially from the 90s. I do too. 
I do too, because there's a really good one later. Uh, so Michael is essentially just like, what is happening? Like, I don't understand, like, how, like, it's a game. It's not supposed to be real. Like, how is that guy dead? This is when the trickster appears for the first time. And um, he starts out just by his head popping out of the t- to the TV, uh, looking very strange. And then all of a sudden, all of his organs <laughs> come out from his neck and Hell then yeah. form his body. And I'm going to say, like, if you've <sighs> never seen the movie or you've never even seen the cover, this guy is freaky looking to me. The, I don't like him. You just, the prosthetics that they do on his face to, like, just make it, like, very slightly inhuman are extremely upsetting. He just looks like Sammy Kerr from fucking Trick or Treat to me. But but okay. if you, like, stretch But if he his just face had, like, whatever bit. the disease the elephant was, man had... If if Sammy Kerr became the Joker, he like I, like this. So I think this is one of the things that kind of loses me a bit in the movie is like the tonal shift between everything else and then the trickster just essentially being a weird goof about guy. Yeah. Like I think like I don't know it like I there. No, that rocks. I mean, like I just feels like two different movies to me that I kind of would rather watch two separate movies in these tones than like, I don't know. It's weird to me. So when I originally watched this, um, the trickster showing up is to me what like made this movie really good because on the surface, like I already love the idea of like this, just like this, like horror kid who's like into games playing this game where he essentially thinks it's a game, but then he's, like, actually murdering people. Like, I like the idea behind that. And then all of a sudden, you introduce this, like, fucking mo- weird monster dude, and it's like, what in the hell is going on? And they don't explain to you what's going on, really, at all. And I kind of am, like, really here for it. It's just, like, adds... Yeah, I don't need to know. To me, it to me it adds to the, like, what the fuck of it all so if you haven't seen the trickster he essentially I'm, he he really like still to me does kind of look like howie mandel <laughs> but they've added enough stuff to him where uh, he's like kind of <laughs> uncanny valley where his ears are slightly too big his mouth is slightly too long like his face is it's <laughs> his eyes are close together he has no eyebrows it's weird. He, he really does look like howie from little monsters but if he was like a white guy yeah. instead of a, a pers- blue guy like, yes 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 it's, it's weird it's like a palette swap but like they like i don't know who does the but also a bird the special effects in this movie because like it's one of those things like kit said where they add enough stuff to him that like he still looks like a regular person but just off enough and like yeah, he's got... it's it's weird because it's one of those things where every time I see him, I'm like, I know those are prosthetics, but I can't tell if this is just a dude with a weird you fucking can't figure head. That well, <laughs> okay. So makeup artists, I'm assuming there's a few, but one of the um, the first person that comes up is Bill Corso, who is in like Blade Runner, Deadpool, Star- not in obviously did makeup for Star Wars. Um, and then there's another person who's done like Logan, Pirates of the Caribbean, Alice in Wonderland, stuff like that. So people who went on to make like pretty big movies, this person to me seems more on track. There's another person named Steve Johnson who also is credited in, um, video drone, video drone, uh, humanoids from the deep demons to return of the living dead, like just kind of stuff like that. But Right night. So yeah, uh, but 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 to your point, it is basically like you're looking at him and you know because you can see his picture, right? Like he still does kind of look like the actor, but you're looking at him and he has like just an uncanny valley enough look that you like kind of can't really figure out how, like what's going on with him, and it could just be like the makeup. Maybe he just has like enough layered over his face that's sculpted in. Because, like, I don't know. He looks very freaky to me. I don't like him. He's very tall. <laughs> well, he I think he's very tall in comparison like... to teenager like Well, yes, for long. yes, yes. He's got very um, long fingers, which is upsetting. Very long fingers. Very long fingernails. He's got kind of, like, a bird aesthetic to him, right? His hair, he's, like, bald, sort of. 
He's yeah, he's, he's like got a, that weird thing that like a lot of these movies do where they like don't understand punk or metal culture. And they're like, yeah. well, a mohawk should just be like this weird giant peacock fucking thing going on on their head. Yeah, peacock's a good a good analogy for well, it. It's just like the and sides also, are shaved, but everything else is too puffy and long. Where it's like a mix really between a mohawk s- and like poison eighties like Brett Michaels yeah. hair. And I, hair. I, like so, I will say it's like it is freaky looking. And then so you know that he's like a punk guy. He's got like a nose ring. Oh yeah, and two... you know he's fucking jamming Green Day in nineteen ninety four. He's here. Um, and also, Primus. True punk. Primus is such Very, a fucking like, baffling choice to me in this. It's so weird. I, I think it's perfect because it's like, oh yeah, this is a weird fucking <laughs> dude that is not stable. I think it would have been be- I, I think I think the choice of song is what gets me. Is I either want it to be like <laughs> more straightforward Primus or like why known as Big Brown Beaver fucking weird as shit Primus. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it was very strange to me because to me it sounded like like rockabilly. And I was like, what is happening here? In some of their songs. Okay, well. It should have been Tommy um, the Cat. Yeah. It should have been, it should have been Scat. Yeah, it should have been Scatman John. Could you imagine? If some okay, fucking dude also... that looked like that burst into my room and just started scatting, I would kill myself. Yeah, it's like, all right, I'm done with video games forever. <laughs> video games this are is... done forever. Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, fair. And he also was kind of dressed like Austin Powers. So there you yeah, go. Yeah, that's because. Well, yeah. So I was going to say. Sh- like fucking Lestat. Shout out to <laughs> George S. Clinton, the like the composer in this movie. Because the score yeah. rocks, even though it's for yeah. the most part like the theme song over and over and over again. Crazy. I but love I like he, it. I, I like the music. He did the score to Austin Powers. I think all of them. Okay, perfect. <laughs> He was like, you know what? Could you, you know imagine you if the trickster, the, the trickster this Austin Powers design. popped out sure, and then yeah. like, the Austin Powers like theme song just started do, playing? Do, 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 do. That would have been I think incredible. I would have loved it. His, yeah, his composing credits are amazing. All three Austin Powers movies, both Mortal Kombat movies. Hell yeah. Wild oh. Things, The Tooth Fairy with The Rock, fucking a couple <laughs> John Waters movies, Brain Scan, 300 Miles to Graceland. Cheech and Chong still smoking. Top Dog with uh, Chuck Norris. Got some bangers on here. Well. Uh, a, an Assassin's Creed movie that seems to be very down on his list, so I can't imagine it's very good. That's well, one with Michael Fassbender, right? No, it looks like it's like a 36. It's like, like a short, a 36-minute thing that maybe was like a tie into the video no. game. Mm. Mm. American Ninja 3 Blood Hunt. Wait, there was a South yeah. movie with Michael Fassbender yeah, in it? there sure was. How did I miss that? Because uh, it was bad. Because I think it came to theaters for like a week and bombed massively. I need to look. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine. You say the word Assassin's Creed in movie and I'm like, mm. well, He did the score to Beverly Hills Ninja and The Love Guru. So you know Ugh, he's killing it. I don't know about Love Guru, but <laughs> I'm here for it. Good for him. We like, we we stand. I like the yeah, score. Yeah, I like the score of this. It's very um, good. Okay, so the trickster shows up, uh, you know, hopefully we painted it at an adequate... Just picture, <laughs> like, if Lance Henriksen and Howie Mandel were forced to be one person. It's yeah. like they went into the booth from, like, Cronenberg's The Fly and were mashed together. So, like, yeah. Lance Henriksen's face is stretched over T. Ryan Smith or whatever the fucking guy's name was. And ha- and Howie Mandel was there too. <laughs> Howie Mandel was doing <laughs> okay. the voice. Um. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Okay. 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 So the trickster showed up, and as like I said, he pops out as a head. His organs come out of his body, and then his body appears around it. Uh. The the special effects like don't aren't great looking, but I love the idea behind it. Super great. Gross. Well, I don't I, like. Um, so in this movie, I think because he's coming from a video game. Some of the like bad CGI, like Zubar doesn't hold up now, kind of makes it work a little bit. Like there's sure. like there's, so there's stuff when they have like their little final confrontation where they're sort of like merging, and like you know when he like gets his hand stuck in him later in the movie, that looks shitty but kind of works in the aspect of like this movie being about like a 
VR video game. If that makes sense. Yeah. Sure. Um, the only time you're going to hear me stick up for super terrible CGI except for Mortal Kombat. I, yeah. <laughs> Fair. And um, Lawnmower yeah, Man. Like I said, Lawnmower Man. He's a look, banger. He's, look, he's looking freaky to me. Um, I wrote, he puts in like rockability, rockability, I don't know, and dances around he a little bit. Welcome to America by Primus. There you go. Um, Michael is like yelling at him because he's essentially like, who who are you? Like, what are you doing here? Like, I didn't, who killed that guy? Like, essentially just being like, what the fuck even happened? And um, he's like, like, it wasn't real. It was a game. And the trickster is essentially like, likes to like, for, like wax poetic sort of because he's just like, there's no difference between real and not real as long as you don't get caught. And um Michael is of course like okay well I don't know what you're talking about but I'm not going to be I'm not going to play anymore like I'm done and the trickster is just like well you have to um, because there was a witness to what happened and if you don't stop the witness then basically they're going to catch you and um, he's like well I don't understand (laughs) that picture of Hooch is so funny (laughs) Hoot, You're sitting the on the hoot-ster. couch staring at me. He's like, Papa, please show me the trickster. <laughs> um, I want to watch Brain Scan again. Tongue. <laughs> Papa, please. I see we are not um, currently playing Brain Scan, the video game. What is happening? Papa, please put in my Brain Scan disc. I want to yeah. meta. Fucking... Toss me in my gaming chair. I'm going to Photoshop the trickster's <laughs> hair on the hooch. Game. Please oh do. my god, yes. <laughs> do it do it right now. So, um, Michael is like, I kind of like don't really understand because I don't know that guy. So like I don't understand why I killed him. And the trickster is basically just like, that's what what makes the murder perfect because you don't know him, so there's no alibi, there's nothing to connect you to him. <laughs> except it, for walking around his place the day after for, the murder. Except for going immediately going to the house and stepping under the police tape and putting suspicion on yourself you know yeah. other than that and shouting um, i did it as you ran away yeah <laughs> i can explain Woo! um so yeah he's so the trickster is basically just like so yeah um you did a pretty good job except there's a witness and you have to take care of them and the trickster is like don't worry like um, the only people that know you did this murder was the witness and me, and I won't tell anybody, even <laughs> if you electrocute me or break my fingers. But absolutely do not play country music yep. around me. And I was Him like... breaking his fingers one by one's very upsetting. <laughs> it looks so, like, again, Uncanny Valley, because his fingers are so long, and he's just, like, cracking, like, breaking them towards... You hated it. The worst part is how, like, deep set his fingernails are. Like, Mm -hmm. they're all the way down to his first knuckle, and I hate it. (laughs) I hate it so much. They're pretty gross. So, um, yeah, just don't play country music around him, which, same. So, Shrickster um, says that essentially the only way that he will be free of the game is if he plays through all four discs. And then everything will go back to normal and he'll be fine. And Michael is just like, okay, fine. Um, So for some reason, Michael decides that he's going to take the foot and take it out into the woods and bury it. And there's like this whole shenanigans. No, I mean, fair. I I, also, I understand like not wanting to have a severed foot in your freezer next to your ice cream and hash browns. Could have made it into a meat shake. He could have actually. Perfect crime. Actually, probably pretty good way to get rid of evidence. Uh, you know? So, um, yeah, Michael goes out in the woods to bury the foot. There's this whole wackadoo shenanigans where a German shepherd shows up, steals the foot. He can't catch up to him because of the limping thing. And then... Um... <laughs> this is pretty good. <laughs> the best I could do on... Very quick. Oh my god. <laughs> That's incredible. The tongue makes it. Well, it looks like he's about to lick that CD. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me a taste. That's how he plays it. Yeah. I, I like Look, it. buddy, I that's still, you. I love it. Huh? Yeah. Do you, does you want to like do that it? with your hair? <laughs> yep. 
He just started. Oh my god! Very I think you know what you're doing for Halloween this year. I was literally one hundred percent. Definitely has to be the trickster for Someone, Halloween. Someone October first. Remind, remind Kit. <laughs> yeah, yes. please remind me. Uh, in like August, because if you're in October, it's not going to be nearly enough time for me to keep reminding Order myself to a do it. Dog Austin power suit and a wig. Perfect. That would be, oh my god, I need to see Hooch in an Austin Powers suit and then the fucking Trister <laughs> hair. Yeah, I love it. Um, uh, oh, right, the dog steals the foot. He ends up getting it back. It's like a whole weird thing. Anyways, um, he goes, he gets back home. He starts burning the clothes that he was wearing during the murders when Kyle shows up. Um, this scene kind of doesn't mean anything like doesn't have anything to do with the plot that much except it's uh my favorite use of them editing the subtitles so i put it in there they're basically arguing um michael stayed home from school and he said oh yeah um i got mono which like (laughs) was so funny to me because do you remember when that was like legit such a thing oh yeah like i don't know do kids still get mono i don't don't know know if it was like a big thing more than like it was People talking about how the, so you could get mono TV for shows. making out, like, in my school. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was all over the place in, like, teenage, you know, whatever school but shows. I'm like, but I can't remember. I'm like, a... it's in another one of those things, like, quicksand, where, like, we thought. Well, no. I think what. Quicksand was, like. I think mur- what it was is that everyone writing those shows was, like, 58 years old. And so they're writing sure. about shit yeah, that was that... a problem and like when they were in high school. All the kids yeah. keep getting mono. Like all like if you watch like... if you watch like you know, like I bring up Saved by the Bell a lot or like uh Boy Meets World or any of those things now, you're like, this was clearly yeah. written by somebody who hasn't been a teenager <laughs> in thirty years. Yeah. King of the Hill had a mono episode. I, I was that's what I was trying to say, yeah, King of the Hill even. So like it was like so prevalent in media. That hearing him say, oh, no, I just stay home because I had mono just, like, really brought that back at for me. Because I don't think I've heard anyone say mono in the last, like, two decades. At least King of the Hills mono episode was a flashback. So it wasn't modern time sure. like yeah. Bobby. It was fucking <laughs> yes. when Hank was in high school. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, he's like, sorry, I got mono. Like, I couldn't come to school, whatever. Also, okay. And then um, so Kyle's... Michael also has doesn't leave the house. How did he get mono? Why is Kyle oh, just like, yeah. yeah, that checks out. You're constantly making out all the time. Right. right. And he's Kyle also, doesn't guess, seem very bright, yeah, fair. to be fair. No. I mean, no. He's like, damn, dude, mono, that's too bad. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, since you're sick, like, can I borrow the game, Brain Scan? And, of course, Michael now does not want to let him borrow the game because he's trying to, like, save him or whatever. And, um... Fuck that. I Michael feel like this brain says, scan game is a curse. Like, it follows. I'd be like, no, you take it. Well, but he doesn't want to do that. They're buddies forever. Yeah, well, now they can be brain scan buddies forever. Mm. Buddies forever means you share everything, including being a murderer in real life playing a video game. <laughs> buddies mm. forever means that you're both <laughs> going to prison. Yeah. No. I don't want to. You have to be tried as one. Yeah. Oh, jeez. You have to merge with your friend, like the trickster and Michael. Right. Well. Um, oh, okay, so Michael calls him Kyle Asshole, <laughs> and they subtitle it Kyle Idiot, and I just found that so funny. Because, like, asshole isn't really even that It's not, like a, that it's not a, a good word. fucking switch out it's either not, way, but yeah, idiot no, is funnier than you ask me. Like, actually... Actually saying Kyle asshole get out of here also doesn't make a lot of sense, but Kyle idiot. I don't know. Calling somebody an idiot to me is just like hilarious I, because it's just so blatant. That line bothered me because I feel like he was probably supposed to say, Michael, you asshole, get out of here, and does it, and they couldn't get him to redo it and say it properly, so they just Well left Michael it. is the one that no, Michael's the one that said it to Kyle. Yeah, I know. Or you know what I whatever fucking whoever's name. All these bland ass names in this movie. But, like, you know they were probably supposed to say, like, you asshole, and just don't. And, like, just left it in they the They said fuck. Like. I think maybe he only said it that one time. Anyways, 
Um, so they basically like argue about the game, whatever. Kyle storms off. The doorbell rings again, and it's Kimberly. Uh, she comes in because she has brought his homework and mail in, and I was like, "What are you thirty? Fuck, um, fuck that! If someone brought me homework from school when I was out sick, I would be so mad. Enemy. I would throw it in the yard and be like, "I didn't get this. He get out of here! You never saw also, me." Yeah, she also makes it a point to say that they're not in any classes together. So, like, how did she even know he wasn't there? <laughs> Went way out of her way for this. Yeah. And so, basically... Can you imagine uh, having a here, crush on someone that brought you fucking homework from school while you're sick? That would kill, that, would kill that crush immediately. Yeah. And bring me ramen. <laughs> <laughs> um, he goes through the mail, and there's another brain disc brain scan disc in there and he's like freaked out of course and she's just like and she like leaves the phone rings and um it is like brain scan calling so that the trickster appears and it's just like all right all right you ready to play disc two and michael's like no i'm gonna go show the disc to the police and then the trickster is like okay sure go ahead i don't know they I'm just sure, have like a stupid I'm argument sure the about it cops gonna fucking have that any idea game. what you're talking about when you bring him a disc for a video game in 1994. <laughs> so This disc is right. making me murder. Help. He's just like, yeah, that's what video games do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Michael puts in, so he's like, okay, fine. The only way to get through this is for me to just like keep playing the game. So he puts in this second disc, but this time he records himself playing it. And, I don't know what that's supposed to do. An hour and a half. And I feel like the only time we really see him doing like the like the first person playing of the game is the very first time. And for me, I feel like I would have cut some of the things and added more of this like first person part. The reason that they don't do it now is because like obviously he's trying to figure out like what's actually going on but i don't know i just felt like I, I wanted to see more of him playing the actual game or whatever because essentially what happens is it cuts to him waking up like having already completed the level but but this time he doesn't remember what happened and he's like oh my god what so he watches the video that he recorded of himself and shows that when he gets hypnotized by the tv he is physically getting up out of the chair and walking out and and doing the murders Damn. So I think my question is right. more like, does he look like a Zyga, like he's sleepwalking when he's doing this? Or does he look so, normal, like if you just walked past him on the street? I think he looks normal because we see him, like when he is playing the final disc, we see him, or, or maybe it's the third one. We see him, like, sneak into that yard, and he's very much cognizant. He's he's just, like, a normal person. So when he's doing the first, like, I, I think he just looks like a normal person. It's just his reality is that he's playing the game. Oh, so, huh. but I, you know, again, I don't know. So I, I guess it's, I, I have some questions about why the second time... I think he I think this would have been more interesting. Plays the game and doesn't have any memory. If they switched it, where the first time it happens, he wakes up, you don't see the game, and you have like you're kind of like, oh, what what happened? And then you show it the second time instead of like vice versa. But also, like either way, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I I guess I just like don't really understand. Like. I don't know. Yeah. Um, obviously, they're they're with they're withholding what happens in the second disc for like a grand reveal, which essentially is he watches the video, he sees himself actually leave, and he's basically just like like what? Oh my god! Like I'm playing a game. Like I, what? Why am I actually leaving? He opens the freezer, and what he sees inside is Kyle, his buddy forever's necklace with blood all over it. And he's like oh. Why would he put oh, fat God, in the no. refrigerator? Kyle. <laughs> he I likes know, the feel of cold metal. metal. <laughs> Cutting off someone's foot and just stealing their necklace seem very different degrees of things, of trophies. Uh, so he's like, oh my God, no. So he calls Kyle and it's like ringing, ringing, ringing. And then the detective picks up and is like, 
And he's like, Kyle, Kyle, answer me, Kyle, my best friend. And the detective's like, who is this? And he's like, oh, nobody. And he hangs up. <laughs> it's not Kyle. <laughs> it is not Michael, the boy who's been to all of the crime scenes. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Goodbye. The trickster you should have immediately off. done like a fake Italian accent. <laughs> They're like, uh, I don't know. Is that our number? I'll see you later. <laughs> that would have been actually so funny. So the kid doesn't think on his feet. No, he doesn't. He's yeah, he's only sixteen. Okay, his brain don't work. He's so good. <laughs> These things um, come with time. That's right. Um, the trickster shows back up, and Michael is like, "You piece of shit! I, like, wh- why did you make me do this? Um, Kyle didn't actually witness anything. Like, he was under the impression that." that the person that he was going to get rid of the witness saw the murder happening and the church was like no i guess like he wasn't really a witness but he knows stuff about you and i was like yeah. I mean? <laughs> obviously his name is the trickster he's tricking michael into doing these things so it doesn't like obviously that's like the whole thing but yeah. i'm just like michael c- come on bro where like, are you trusting the trickster like, yeah literally he's like i don't know he just knew stuff about you like like there's there's just no reason. And, like, the thing that gets me about this movie, too, is that, like, I know, I know Michael is the killer. But if I'm the detective, I feel like the detective immediately, like, suspecting a 16-year-old in, 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 a, in so far as that he's going to later illegally break into his house to steal evidence. I'm, I'm like, come on, guy. Maybe chill out a little bit. He's a child. I don't know. Um, not that child don't do murder, obviously, but I just think it's funny that, like, they have, they're trying to convince me that this detective is, like, smart and good at his job, which they just cannot. I will never believe it. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, okay. Oh, okay, so Trickster shows back up and she's like, I don't know, your friend knew stuff about you, so... Yeah, he had to die. You know, maybe he could have figured out that you were the one doing the murders, which he definitely would not have. Yeah, um, but he's like, okay, so smart. No, no, he would not have put it together, <laughs> especially when he showed up and he's like, dude, I heard there was a murder in your neighborhood. It's super cool. And Michael's like, uh, a man died. I don't think that's cool. And he's like, oh, I mean, no, yeah, not cool, but like interesting, right? Like, <laughs> he has no idea. <laughs> he's, um, he's not wrong. It is pretty interesting. It is interesting. Also, Again, again, okay, so this is like, you're saying Michael is not very quick on his feet. I feel like this is such a trope with main characters in situations like this where they almost, like, don't react at all. Because, like, whenever the detective is talking to him, he just, like, kind of stands there and, like, stares as if he just woke up, which obviously makes a lot of sense. But I'm like, in my mind, if I had committed the murder and I knew I did and I was stupid enough to go to the crime scene and then the detective was like what are you doing here I would be like I'm scared because there's a murderer and I'm trying to figure out if I am going to be murdered like there you go stand back man I'm helping (laughs) yeah just pretend like you're being a child who's like way into being a detective like step back I've got this okay (laughs) I'm gonna help you crack the case Hold my glass of milk, all right? I'm on the case yeah. now. Yeah, you should, if, Hold my warm if milk. If he um, walked up and just chugged a glass of warm milk, that cop would be like, all right, you're legit. You're in. Let him in. Yeah, yeah I, suit, suit I, up. I think that would make me go, oh, yeah, this guy's definitely the murderer. <laughs> <laughs> what if he was wearing a trench coat at the same time? That's what I'm saying. Even, He's yeah, just dressed morning, like Columbo. Yeah. yeah. Well... Columbus nice medicine would, you got here. He would enjoy a glass of milk. He'd be like, one more thing. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Trickster Trickster is like, listen, buddy, I know that um, you're actually sad about your friend dying, but you don't actually feel guilty about anything you've done, right? And Michael's kind of just like, mm, well, I'm a 16-year-old boy, so no, I don't. And he's like, all right, we'll see. All you got to do is keep playing, finish the game, play the third disc. Uh, you left a clue behind. So now in the third disc, you have to go and cover up your clue. And he's like, okay, like, fine, but I don't really want to kill anybody. And he's like, oh, no, no, don't worry, don't worry. Like, you're just going to have to go, like, cover up this evidence that you left. Which... Um, he's like, okay, fine, I'll do it. Then the detective shows up at the house to question him, and 
um he basically is just like oh yeah so like i heard your best friend died weird we went to your school and everybody just basically told me that you were a freak weird right <laughs> yeah, was so rude what he was like they said dickhead. you're weird and strange and uh, seriously and then he's just like okay well thanks for you know my friend just died <laughs> thanks just for told telling me everyone me at school hates, hates me, me. <laughs> but go up yeah. My mom they died. Said very off-putting. My mom died. My dad's yes, not here. Also, my best friend's dead. This yeah. girl hates me. Also, everyone at my school thinks this, I'm a weirdo. Thank you. Yeah. And I've got to do homework. <laughs> the well, yeah, and this dumb the bitch brought me homework. Also, is like, where's your father? Okay, fix your. Where's your now. father? Like, you can't question a minor without a, without parent guards. <laughs> Huh? Said Katie, fix your internet. <laughs> What's wrong with I don't it? You keep like buffering What's in wrong and with out. It? Oh, it is probably just me. Just me. So yeah, the detective is also just like talking to him without his guardian present. Doesn't seem to care that the dad's not there or anything. He's just like really suspicious about this child. So he goes outside and he like tells the cop that's with him. Oh, suspicious because there's ashes in the fireplace and it's summertime and i'm like okay which i don't know um okay so um this is when the trickster tells michael that um oh shows michael that um kimberly wrote an article in the newspaper about how when he found out his friend was died died he was crying yeah so so uh michael is like oh what, fuck her, what a piece of shit dead. yeah seriously crying over your dead friend yeah what a, dumb, what a dumb weirdo fucking idiot <laughs> and so the trickster is just like yeah forget about her here he the trickster like cuts michael's hand somehow and then there's like all this blood pulling onto the ground and then the disc turn or the blood pool like turns into the third disc and I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. That's the Sick. that's how that's how I assume the discs show up every single time, not like through the postal Is service that twice. Not how you got movies from Netflix early on. It's the blood, not the through the mail. So that's why I'm confused about it. Yeah, that's like, what I mean. I, I needed it. all the Netflix discs I, I got just like appeared in a pool of blood. Right, and yeah. that's why I was saying in the beginning they have all these like mythical powers to like give you the game, but then they're going to use the postal service two times. I don't think so. <laughs> it would have been sick uh, if Netflix like mailed you a knife. It's like, <laughs> all right, your hand. stab yourself. <laughs> yeah, uh, we need two tablespoons of blood that will turn into your. That's kind of what it Netflix, felt like, though, to, be, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> Netflix send me a knife. Netflix. There you go. Uh, 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 trademark. We're starting knife flicks. Yeah. Knife flicks. Ten dollars a month. We'll send you I a random it. knife. Yep. Already, already got deal. fingerprints on it, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you won't. You won't know when. You won't know why. It'll just show up. Um. If you live in the so, area, I might throw it at you. There you go. Watch <laughs> out. Yeah, we're gonna deliver it by throwing um, it from a car at you. Yeah. <laughs> don't be alarmed. It's just ne- knife flicks. Yeah. Those. Yeah. It's just knife flicks. Be big. Fucking, I'm gonna get one of those like giant decals for the side of the car, so you'll know. Yeah, uh, that's our um tagline is don't be alarmed, it's Netflix. I'm just gonna just take yeah. the Netflix logo <laughs> and not change the word Netflix, but just make all of the letters made out of knives. Oh, won't it still say Netflix? Yeah, though? but it'll be made out of knives nope. so people know. Oh, okay, fair. No one could tell. <laughs> Uh, oh, is that Netflix? Oh, no, those are knives. Oh, <laughs> oh uh, Netflix. Netflix. I, was, Netflix. I heard about desperately that. want to take this idea on Shark Tank now just to just see Please. their reactions. <laughs> Mark Cuban would, would love it. Mark Cuban would, I would like, love smart two million dollars. If you could go on there and pitch it, but like just totally like stone face, just like, yeah, this is my I idea. Knife flex. I would yeah. throw knives at people from a car. <laughs> the knife delivery Maybe service, like, kind of like DoorDash. Me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of like uh, Cutco, but knife. I have to get out. And take you know, a, speedier. Get out and take a picture of the knife jammed in someone's leg to to prove that it was delivered. Yep, yep exactly. Yeah. Yep, the tracking is like you call someone Damn, and you're like now, idea. and then you throw it. Yeah, we've I got think it's a ideas. Winner. Yeah, I think so. We've had a few in our day. <laughs> I think this is it. Yeah, I gotta say, I I do feel like it is better than ranch milk. 
Uh, and debatable. <laughs> Maybe that's what Michael's drinking in this. I think it is. Oh actually. yeah. It's uh, yep. It was all leading to brain scan. So, wow. Ooh, yeah, he, yeah, he's a freak. Okay, so yeah, he cuts <laughs> he cuts his hand, and then the blood pool turns into the third disc. And the trickster says, "Like, listen, you need to." All right, I got some bad These news. Are your... Apparently, there's a online culinary school in Brazil called Knife Flicks. Boo. <laughs> Don't take our name for your prestigious culinary institute. At Knife Flicks, you will master the art of knife making. How is this? What? Ooh. Oh, cutlery school. I mean, it's a cutlery school, not culinary. <laughs> I was like, I'm so confused, but. Wait, so you're like forging a knife I or what? I guess. All right, I'm Why in. Is it I'm back in. Flicks? Oh, I guess it's online. I guess that makes sense. Good on you. You beat us to it. Oh, yeah, I like it. I'm, I stand Netflix still. Um. Okay, so Trickster says, listen, you got two options. Either you play this third disc or you kill yourself. <laughs> How about it? And Michael's like, all right, I'll play the disc, I guess. Little gamer. No logic. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. So he's like, yeah, okay. Um, Kimberly comes over and tries to apologize, trying to say that her friend is actually the one that wrote about Michael crying in the newspaper, but he doesn't fucking care and he blasts music. Meanwhile, the detective sneaks into his house and illegally steals evidence, which is ashes from the fireplace. Um, again, illegal. Yeah. That's like fine. You do whatever he wants. Then, I mean, then later the detective calls a kind of, it seems to me it's like a neighborhood watch where he like gathers like all of the, the men in the, in the neighborhood to do like a patrol and to try and like walk, you know, like do patrols and see if they can catch this like killer. And he very, in a very weird way, but specifically says like, do not have a firearm on you because, like, you'll get in trouble. I'll take your gun. Don't have a firearm. <laughs> like, you're you're um, volunteers and you're just doing it. You're just helping, right? No, no guns. Thanks. And they're like, okay. Um, the principal sulks off, very sneakily looking. Um, okay, so Michael puts in disc three, and essentially what he's got to do is. Yeah, he's basically just like, listen, I will go in and cover up. Basically, the trickster is like, you left footprints at a crime scene. And I'm not going to tell you where, but you got to go cover them up. Uh, and he's like, okay, well, I will go in the game. All I'm doing is going to cover up my tracks. I'm not going to kill anybody. And trickster's like, cool, no problem. So <laughs> I trust this you, is this, this, trickster. Literally. There is like one part where he goes, you're tricking me. And I'm like, <laughs> he's the trickster. Yeah. What do you expect? <laughs> Also, look at his face. Does he look like he's ever said anything <laughs> like, like honestly in his whole life? He literally looks like a trickster. Um. So this is the this is the scene where we're like, okay, we now this is the third time he's playing the game, and we know that Michael is in the game playing it, but we see this just like third person. So we we're, we're watching it just like the rest of the movie, which is the part of it that doesn't. It's not like. I don't, I feel like they should have, I just don't like that they keep changing the way that they're portraying him being in the game to us. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, first person, then we don't see it, now it's third person, like, I don't know, whatever. So, uh, he basically, like, sneaks up to Kyle's house, and they're, that's, this is also why I'm saying the cops, like, like the detective is going to sneak into a house to steal ashes but they don't see the muddy footprints in the yard outside the crime scene like i have a lot of questions on. about like can you just create a posse to go walk around a town and look for a killer at night i feel like the answer is you can but i don't know i don't feel like you should this is like the third or fourth person like, that's died, I know, so i don't feel like you should i know it's a thing ask people that they'll do for like a missing, missing children people. or whatever but like yeah. it's very strange to be like hey there's a murder in town everybody go go fucking separate and everyone go out I'll go run around in the it. woods at night yeah no i feel like the answer is no 
Uh, but he's, you know, he's the be- he's a really great detective, so he's definitely doing it. Um, so Michael goes to cover up his footprints um, from the crime scene, and while he's doing that, um, there is a cop inside Kyle's room still like dusting the keyboard for for fingerprints or something, and the trickster calls him and says. Hey, uh, there's an intruder outside, and the guy's like, "What? Who is this?" And he looks outside, and he sees Michael. And again, this is where the whole Michael being in an accident thing comes up because he's being pursued by not only this cop now, but like all of the men who are like scouring the woods for this killer. And so he's um, running very slowly, and the scene is like very drawn out. And essentially, what ends up happening is that. Um, the principal sneaks up behind him and grabs him and is like, I got you. And they're like wrestling and shit. But then um, they're like around some kind of construction site and a bunch of wood falls and crushes oh, no, it's the a principal. Bunch of bricks. It rocks. Oh, oh, even better. Bricks. Anyways, he gets fucking crushed. And uh, Michael's like, oops. Uh, so he hides and um, he ends up getting cornered by. I actually wasn't sure who this man was Uh, he's just like a guy in in the dude yeah in the neighborhood watch but he has a gun which the detective explicitly said not to have so one of the other guys shows up and is like someone not to have a gun (laughs) right and so somebody else shows up and goes he's got a gun (laughs) and just like fucking shoots and kills him it's so funny because that's exactly what would happen too (laughs) i know you put a fucking group together any of them have a gun which is which is funny is the problem that he had a gun, but like not yes. the fact that the guy that shot him had a gun. <laughs> because correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think the guy that shot him was a cop. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Because like the cops should have the guns, right? But either way, he's like he's got a gun. He shoots him, kills him. He just was like some random guy, whatever. And so uh, Michael is saved. Michael comes like <laughs> stumbling out of the woods, and the cop he runs into a cop. The cop's like, what are you doing here? And he's like, uh, well, I, um, and the cop's like, we just caught the murderer. Get yeah. out of here, kid. We just murdered the murderer. I was like, what? Why, like, where's the logic that this guy is the murderer just because he had a gun? Well, like, he I'm got shot, so about it. he had to be yeah. the murderer. Sure. Um, the cop killed him, so it had to have been a bad guy. Yep. Yeah. Or an acorn. The trickster, sure. It's hard have to tell. Have you guys seen or. that video? Oh my god, it's it was so insane. Wild. I don't think so. <laughs> There's a cop that's Ugh. like his body cam that gets out and an acorn falls and makes a sound and he just starts going, shots fired, shots fired, shots fired, starts he, like, firing into to a the fucking ground. neighborhood. Because, and yeah, acorn. he thinks it's the guy <laughs> handcuffed in the back of his car, so he just fired, he unloads a whole clip into the back of the car and then the oh sergeant God. i guess or sheriff sheriff that was with him she hears him shouting shots fired i've been hit and she runs over and starts <laughs> unloading into the fucking car too oh. somehow both of them missed like 30 shots at this person in the back of the fucking car but, yeah it's just an acorn it's just the, fucking at the top of his car scaredest group that of is... people on earth for the people who quote unquote like have the power or whatever, that is so scary. Oh, I'm scared. right. Um, oh, like, how do you not know the difference I, between a fucking gunshot and an acorn? I saw a meme that was the thing from Key and Peele of like Jordan Peele sweating profusely, and it was like yeah. it was uh, <laughs> it was like officer, you have any weapons on you? And it was like me with three acorns in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's terrible. Oh, good woof, times. Woof. The video is yeah. very funny, knowing that no one. Yeah, actually knowing died. that no one got hurt. Right. It's, it's just one of those like absurd things. Where you're just like, look at this fucking idiot. Seriously, I've, oh my I've god! I've been hit. Is the most like. <laughs> he he shouts shots fired and then he hits the ground and he says, "I've been hit." I'm like what? <laughs> By what? The ground. <laughs> he fell onto an air an acorn and right. Yeah, he he got a little pinchy. He didn't like it. <laughs> the it, jumping on the ground knocked the wind out of him, and it felt the same as a gunshot. He assumes. Oh, like a terrible time. Incredible. So yeah, so they they got the killer. Get on, go on, get out of here, kid, or whatever. Which seems weird to me that they wouldn't question this Why kid out in the woods, but whatever. 
Yeah. The trickster is very pleased, to say the least. And Michael is just like, listen, like, you said no one was going to be killed. Like, I'm fucking done with this. Like, um, I'm not playing a game. All I'm doing is committing crimes. And the trickster is like, it's only crime if you get caught. Fair. Yeah. Um, and he's like, listen. Oh, and then, like, when he's on his way home, he's, like, walking by Kimberly's house. And Kimberly's like... Michael, what happened? And Michael's like, uh, nothing. And so the trickster was like, oh, very, very fun. That was super cool. I loved it. The only thing is, um, there was a witness again. Uh, and I think you know who it was. So it was the trickster. How about how's about it? I mean, actually. <laughs> it was yourself. Um, Kill yourself. And um <laughs> You know, Michael, you saw yourself do this. Yeah, he did actually, and so the trickster is just like, "Listen, there, she's a witness, and you, she is part four. If you want to end this, you have to go kill her." So that night, he brain scans and breaks into Kimberly's house, which I found very strange because it's supposedly nighttime. She's sleeping. All the light, light, every single light is on in this house. To be fair, if there's a murder downstairs in your town, would you turn your lights off? I guess not, but also. I, they left their door open with just their screen. <laughs> so he like easily opened it. I, I just feel like it's leaving all the lights on doesn't really do anything I mean, if you're like not shutting your doors. In New Jersey. I mean that's <laughs> I mean, you know. Um yeah, so he gets a pair of scissors, he goes into her room, and the trickster is like, Go on, go on, kill her, or I'll do it. And Michael is like no, I'm fucking done listening to you and I don't want to do this anymore. So Michael swipes the scissors at the trickster and he's just like, who are you anyways? Like, what are you doing here? And the trickster says, well, Michael, isn't it obvious? I'm you. Boo. <laughs> Boo. Um, and Michael is just like, I don't like that. So he stabs him with the scissors. But then the wound uh like sucks <laughs> michael's arm in and is like i feel like i would have a lot of questions to ask before stabbing this guy if i was told that i look like this in the future <laughs> like, bro what happened to my I head also, i also am a little surprised that he didn't try and just like turn on the trickster earlier like but i don't know whatever this is this is the climax of the movie right so then um his his scissor stabbing hand is sucked into this guy's body. So he tries to poke his eyes <laughs> out. Um, and there's like a green goo that comes out so of it. Apparently then... there was supposed to be like this huge special effect that they filmed of the two of them merging into one. Where they would have mm -hmm. been like one person for, you know, this whole climax yeah. that like got cut from the film and I want to see it. That's a bummer because, like, yeah, so essentially what happens is, like, he tries to poke his eyes out and then his other arm gets, like, sucked into the trickster's face. And then essentially what happens is that they merge into, like, um, they, like, are merging into one person. But it's more like the trickster is absorbing Michael and Karen wakes up when this happens and is like, ah, scary. And then they have this, like, really dumb looking... Um, like thing of Michael's like full body like whoa going down some like CG warp tunnel things that I hated but then when Michael stands back up he has the trickster's like eerily green eyes and then his face just kind of looks like burned or something like a little bit on the side and so I question like when I when I saw that, I was like, I don't really understand how this is supposed to be indicative that he is now the trickster, like the trickster is inhabiting him. It would have been so cool if they could have done like some kind of prosthetic to Michael to make them look like a merged person. Yeah. So that's such a bummer. Because um, I feel like I still, even though I'm saying that I, I really like this movie, I gave it three and a half stars. If they would have merged into some kind of weird monster, it would have pushed it to like four. Yeah, 18 four, stars. Four, four and a half for me. Yeah. It's just a bummer um, that whatever, I guess, it seems like whatever footage from it is just kind of like lost, I guess. I don't know if it has ever been yeah. like out there because I want to see what that looked like. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, he, he. You think they like, just put the, like the, the wig on uh, Edward <laughs> Furlong and that was it? The wig, the wig and the nose ring. There you go. <laughs> Have him dress like Austin Powers for oh, real. God. But I mean, like, he, he does look creepy with his eyes being this, like, pea soup green or whatever. 
But, like, I don't understand the weird effect on the face because, like, the trickster doesn't have anything burnt about him. So, I don't know. just doesn't work for me. Um, but Kimberly is awake now. Um, uh, Michael being controlled by trickster is advancing on her. And she's basically just like, I don't care what you've done. I love you. I've always loved you. And then she admits that she's also been a stalker. That's so like, weird. <laughs> She's they, also they, the trickster. They they have been spying on each other. So she's been standing in front of the window and like taking her clothes off and stuff for him to record and like watch or whatever. But she's also been taking pictures of him sitting in the window reading Famagor- Fangoria, which is like weird. so fucking weird. Um, so I don't know. I've got a lot of I've got a lot of issues with their relationship because it's so weird. Um, Unhealthy. Yeah. And but she's basically just like, look, look, I I love you. I I just I've been keeping it a secret. Here's these photos I took admiring you. And so that's basically gets Michael to kind of like snap out of it. And he and the trickster split into again. And that's another kind of like issue I have with this ending where I feel like I wanted there to be more of this like trickster Michael merging thing because it pretty much ends immediately. And Michael is just like, uh, says to the trickster, the trickster's like, ah, I can't believe you overpowered me or whatever. And Michael says, game over, you lose. <laughs> and the trickster's like, I don't think so. I have a surprise for you. And he opens the door and the detective comes in and the detective calls him a murderer yeah. and then shoots him. <laughs> the Michael, most cop thing to ever happen in a film. Murderer, so murderer. I, I agree. Because I also feel like like they don't ever um, lay out the stipulations of the game for us. So we don't know the rules, but I do feel like if there's a stipulation about like, you have to complete everything within this time frame. to me, if you die in the game, you die in real life. But that's just, that, that would just be my opinion about it. But uh, Michael wakes up in his chair, in his gaming chair, all sweaty, uh, his glass of milk unchugged. So this is, he wakes up basically as if he hadn't played the game at all. And he's just like, oh my God, what the fuck? What, what, what's going on here? And the announcer comes over the, the TV and is basically just like, hello there, you've just experienced brain scan. We here. And it just like starts going on this feel, spiel about like the game and how it was like produced and made and all of stuff or whatever. Um, Michael looks out the window and the party from the beginning of the movie is still going on next door. And he's like, oh man, awesome. Um, he's like, I didn't kill anybody. There's no trickster. Everything's great. Then he freaks out and literally trashes all of his electronics, including his lamp. He doesn't even want electricity around him. Okay. That's how dead up he is. So after he does that he hears kyle calling his name he's like kyle kyle my best friend and um kyle runs down there he's like oh kyle good to see you my buddy i love you and kyle's like what in the fuck yeah why Um, are you being so weird yeah kyle calls him a dick lick Hmm. which i which i find a hilarious like i love i think that's such a funny name to call somebody the subtitle said dirt bag and i was like (laughs) "Okay, okay better than previous things but like i don't know um he's like thank god oh yeah this is where kyle is like saying like oh man thank god you didn't play brain scan i just heard on the news that it like fucking killed the kid essentially it was like hypnotizing his eyes exploded his eyes exploded uh and uh michael just actually doesn't really even acknowledge that he like doesn't really acknowledge it at all he's just like come on let's go over to the party so they go to a party. Uh, Michael goes up to see Kimberly and asks her out. And she's like, no. And he's like, really? And she's like, uh, I'll think about it. He basically talks her into saying, baby, I will think about going out with you. But then he goes over and finds the box of pictures that she took of him. So I'm like a little confused. Yeah, about, it's weird. <laughs> like... Why would she say no if she actually clearly is obsessed with him? I just, I don't understand that. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, I mean, it is your right to say no. I just am confused about why they, 
I guess I'm more over confused about why the pictures turned out to be correct. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't know. So, um, yeah. So, right. Like, yeah, he finds out that she's actually still a stalker in real life. Um, but it's like, okay, whatever. She said, baby. So at school the next day, Michael is like, Hey, goes to the principal and is just like, Hey guy, um, I want to show this game to the horror club which was disbanded, so I'm not sure why they're still having this conversation. But he's like, here you go. And um, the principal is like, okay, um, brain scan. Sounds great, kid. I really have a hard time believing that the principal is going to actually play this game or whatever. But essentially, he's like, here, here's brain scan. Um, I think it's going to be great. You're going to have so much fun. And the principal is like, okay, thanks. And then it turns and shows the trickster appearing in the principal's chair and him and Michael are both like hee 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 we're devious and then um, it shows the credits where um, it starts showing the credits and then the trickster is like wait didn't you forget something and then it shows us the German shepherd with the severed foot and (laughs) brings it to Michael's house which I don't understand because I'm like did he kill that guy or not? Nah? Like, what's the deal here? I missed that part. I, Is it as soon real? As the credits or... started, I was like, I'm done. <clears throat> yeah, it was like they should make a sequel to this now with fucking Edward Furlong playing the trickster. Two I brain, two skin. <laughs> I would actually love that. Like, I want to know. I want the backstory of how he becomes the trickster. If that's actually him, I no, I think I okay. This is what I this is what I'm taking away from this. I think that they were trying to say that the trickster was the embodiment of all of Michael's like trauma and like violent tendencies, and it's because they're like, oh, well, this is like an interactive game that basically uses your your brain chemistry and your uh, preferences and stuff to shape the game around you specifically and the fact that they spring scanned him and created this game where he was a murderer I think like that's what they're trying to say like I don't think they're like oh yeah this I'm actually you in the future I disagree if that makes sense okay fair <laughs> I think it's actually reversed and Edward like Michael is future trickster and Trickster is teenage uh, Trickster Michael. turns into a mm-hmm. child. He's got Benjamin Button disease. Tricksters, yeah, Tricksters yeah. could work that way. I honestly don't know a lot about the the life cycle of a Trickster, so could be. <laughs> the life cycle of a Trickster. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Uh, Katie, did you look at news at all? No. Like the only thing I saw is that apparently there's a rumor that the guy that did War Werewolf by Night is directing a Midnight Suns movie, and I'm in. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, okay. There's also Bewitched fucking reboot coming from somebody. That's okay. That I don't know why we, we're still doing this. Any, is anyone clamoring for new Bewitched? I don't got think the so. the perfect one with fucking Will Ferrell already. <laughs> yeah, I don't think people were asking for that one uh, either, so <laughs> I don't know. All right, Katie, what'd you watch this week? Um, I think the only thing I watched was like a few documentaries, um, none of which are anything to write home about. So right. essentially nothing. What about you, Kit? <laughs> uh, I don't think I watched anything this week either. I got home from wiring up this horse arena. I was just like, I'm going to sit here and die. Uh, pretty well. I think I only watched one movie. I watched the rare blue apes of cannibal isle which is a Malaysian kids movie that was part of that Lost Pictures Vinegar Syndrome release, and it is insane. It's one of the... would not have guessed a kids movie. Huh? I would not have guessed a kids movie. It's it's so weird. It's like, like part musical and like almost feels like a H.R. Puffin stuff style thing because all of the creatures in it just look fucking bizarre and horrifying uh but it kind of rocks 
I oh recommend. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, other than that, we like I said earlier, we started watching the traders, and it's like all, all we've done. <laughs> it's Shit it's so fucking good. <laughs> it's one of the most like everyone in it is so dumb. It's so funny. Like we got a couple episodes into season two, and it's just so funny how oh, how yeah. like everyone in it is so fucking could like dead set that they know who everyone is and they're always so yeah. wildly wrong <laughs> yeah it's like what's your evidence like well i don't have well, they any, had a fucking weird smirk on their face that one time so i know they're the traitor yeah they're not <laughs> terribly upset when that one person died like okay. i think my biggest problem with season two so far is like i liked how season one was like half reality stars and half like just regular people yeah this one's like all and, yeah and like famous people like season like and i, I don't know it's kind of how like a lot of those shows are where season one where there's like no expectations people don't know like what the game yeah, is don't know the game and so like season two they all come in and they're all fucking loud obnoxious people from their own reality shows that are already sort of villain ish on those shows so they just come in and they have that persona already and just come in and they think they know what's going on and they're just being dicks from the start. And I was like, come on. <laughs> this needs more Kate from Below Deck. Fuck a queen. I stand. Now I gotta start watching Below Deck because this stupid show. It rips. <laughs> like, it's... So I, worth it. It seems so stupid. And I'm just like, I know I'm gonna get sucked into it, so... Yep. We were discussing that or Survivor trying to dive into fucking all of survivor and both of it seems oh god i don't like survivor is one of those ones where we've always just been like maybe we'll watch survivor because it seems like a show that like it's like interesting but one where like if we miss things it doesn't feel like you're like missing stuff per se like you could just have yeah. it in the background but there's also like 40 seasons of it <laughs> so we'll see uh katie what's your shout out yes um, <clears throat> my shout out is that, um, a prequel, so I don't even remember when this came out last year, maybe, uh, I shouted out a book that was called What Moved the Dead, <clears throat> which was a retelling of Edgar Allan Poe's Fall of the House of Usher by this author, um, named T. Kingfisher, who has quickly become one of my favorite authors released this book last year and then just released a sequel to it called what feasts at night. And I haven't read it yet, but I'm sure it's going to be amazing. So that's my shout out. Uh, all right. What about you, Kit? Uh, so I actually bought what feasts at night last oh. week, not knowing it was a sequel to <laughs> another book. So my shout out is uh, buying the first book in a series first <laughs> and not the second one like an idiot. Well, <laughs> I was just sitting here and I can't read it yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't like obviously, like I said, I just I pre-ordered a hardback copy because I got it like super. That's oh, so nice. Literally gorgeous. Um, all, all like so many of her covers are so nice. Um, and so I haven't actually read it yet. So I don't know if it's like a direct sequel in that you because like the it, first one is based off of that story right so it like introduces you to the character but i don't think that this one is i like i don't know i think it, it says just, the protagonist returns so i don't know how yeah tied in it is but it does mention yeah. it's like the second in whatever right so, series so I, I feel like probably you would be okay but i also recommend yeah, the first I'm, one just, because, i want to read the first one anyway yeah number one they're both like pretty short reads like you could read them yeah. in a setting and the first one i love the cover even more so i feel like it's worth it's worth it you know but yeah so i'm excited yeah i'm just gonna need all of these on my shelves because the covers are oh, fucking so cool nice. yeah i have like a bunch of the there's like alien novelizations that hell like, yeah used that i bought but i'm missing like random ones of like volumes of them where I'm like, Oh, I'm not going to read these till I get all of them. And then now there's like no used bookstores around here. So, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> so I have like one, a three and like six or some shit, like some whatever numbers. And I'm just like, uh, well 
I'll read these hopefully one day. Um, my shout out, Po Boy sandwiches. Yum. Yeah. I had a fucking incredible vegan one yesterday. I want it again. It was very good. That sounds fucking. There's delightful. a place near us that does this like, um, like mushroom po boy sandwich or whatever. It's so fucking good. Yummy. Oh god, I'm so hungry now. Um. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Same. Uh, uh, I lost my appetite a little bit with like the milk talk, and now I'm hungry again. Uh, Kit, what? Uh, did you pick a movie for next week? I didn't realize it was oh, my turn, so yeah, no, I did not. Let me see if this is streaming <laughs> okay. real quick. I'll say that, that would be my main issue is I'd throw one out and it wouldn't be streaming on fucking anything. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, we'll do the editor next week. Oh, hell yeah. It's on. We are two for two on movies that I own. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I own this one, but it's on Tubi and Plex and Screenbox and stuff, so. Get out of here, please. Yeah. yeah, seriously. <laughs> but it's at least on Tubi. So. I like a Tubi. Um, yeah, movie rocks. I'm very excited to talk about it. Katie's notes are going to be insane. Yeah. Yeah, I we'll see. I'm I'm unsure if I'm going to like it or not. But yeah, I mean, it's it's Astron. I 6, think you'll appreciate so you'll it. Like it. Okay. And it's like it's a yeah, it's a spoof like... of Giallo movies. So like everything in yeah. it is so like... fucking weird. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I did start watching it, but I, I was a me- I'm pretty sure it was this one. It was something Astron Six where I like started it, and I was like, I am absolutely not in the mood for this, and I turned it off. So I, you, can, you know, I just never see went back. Connor Sweeney's dick in it. So listen, I love Connor so much. I don't really need to. See I mean, it's that, not close but... up. You see, if it's like he's like farther down the screen, so <laughs> it's inside. I mean, oh, oh, oh. Urethra cam. <laughs> it's, it's, dick, it's dick vision. It's cam. like when I was it's like say, when it's U U O V uh, urethra. I would say the whole the whole the whole urethra. movie P-O-U. is shot like the the in like Jackass three I think when Bam puts the camera on his dick. Great. So every every shot is from the viewpoint of the character's dick. How someone not done that for a movie yet? I don't. Know, I just don't actually. know. Uh, all right, yeah, the editor next week. Um, you can support us by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash podcast. Katie and I are recording Twilight this week, I believe. Finally, and I can stop thinking about fucking Renesme. You you are such a Renesmee stan now <laughs> I've been seeing you post her picture yeah. everywhere you will I, never be past I, it that's my new you are Renesmee stan for my life my new reaction picture to everything is just gonna be a fucked up picture of this CGI baby <laughs> so spoil here's so Renesmee the, the, the picture that you've been is showing like is actually not CG no it, it was oh, yeah, a yeah, that one's that one's like, a doll yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Horrific. So they, could you imagine, though, being like, hey, so we are doing this movie. Uh, there's a baby in it, and we need you to make, like, a fake doll because we're not going to use, like, an actor baby to, so, like, replace it. Can you do that? And they're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I've definitely seen a baby before. And then they make this doll and give it to you. And you're like, could you? Uh, apparently, like, the reality? apparently there are Worth the money. rumors that that doll is haunted. There's like it there's is no, now. It's it looks not. like it is. Like look at it, but like what? Baffling, just really baffling that it that she exists look, to in be that fair, form that's what ever. She would look like to be so. Sure, and I I feel <laughs> like I wish that they would have been brave and instead of CGing a baby, just put her in there. <laughs> just they should have just used. They her. should have just made a doll for all of the ages, including yeah. when she's just like a then, fucking. 12 year old or whatever at the end what a bunch of bad movies katie i'm mad at you <laughs> no they're so good uh, yeah we will, so we will fucking discuss those sometime this week um yeah patreon.com slash i suffer podcast some point in the nearish future we also will have an episode on ticks whatever kit schedule oh no ticks. yeah this isn't fucking dumb yeah. ticks is good you'll like yeah, it ticks Tips. It's gross, but I it's very tips. fun. Um, 
Every every movie that I had chosen features <laughs> said well said bug exploding out of a human. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. Fix is probably the worst outcome for me. No, I, honestly, I think you'll I think you'll appreciate. They're it. fine. They're tasty. It's for, like it's not. Put them in a glass of water. At least from whatever <laughs> from what I remember, <laughs> it's not as like. I don't feel like it's as like triggering to bug people per se as like arachnophobia was. The, yeah. the ticks are like real goofy. Yeah, they're like looking. and they're okay. they're okay. fucking okay. like huge. They're like the size of a cat for some yeah. reason. <laughs> like yeah, like the size of your because they're just like, like these running huge, around like practical effects. It's it's very fun. Right. That's it's awesome. Fine, then. Um, All right, okay, I'm back in. Yeah, you can uh, follow us on Instagram at I Have to Suffer Podcast and leave us ratings and reviews and all the things. Follow Katie at Hidden Kids 3 and Kitchification of Blood. Follow Katie at Werewolf Face. Join Katie's Patreon at patreon.com slash werewolf face. You can follow and listen to my other podcast, Nate Kate Movie Club. All right. Let's see if we can make the editor run somehow longer than these last two episodes next week. <laughs> if it's a, this mm-hmm. episode and the last one are both over 215 <laughs> so now the editor is gonna have to go for solid two and a half. Oh my goodness <laughs> if anyone can do it we can see what fucking yeah. dumbass tangent True. we get on next week billy the big mouth bass weird buffets <laughs> see what next week holds <clears throat> uh all right i hope you enjoy a nice glass Buddies of hot forever. milk but why yeah Buddies forever. Yeah, you and your buddy go drink some hot milk. Forever. Forever. A big glass of milk. Oh. Also, <laughs> go get you a mac and cheese milkshake. I yeah. mean, not not, not to stretch this out. Do you think a mac and cheese milkshake is room temperature or does it have to be cold? No, cold. Yeah, you can't cold. have a. You can't have a. You need to have a. If it's a milkshake, it has to be cold. It doesn't have to be. Yeah. Gross. Terrible. This podcast is over. Last episode. Goodbye. <laughs>